the NFC wildcard playoff race tightened up a little this afternoon as the Eagles lost to Buffalo and the Redskins beat Miami, leaving both of those teams at 7-5. and five. Green Bay could make it a three-way tie with a win tonight. Otherwise, they would join the Vikings at 6-6, six and six, and Dallas climbed into it this afternoon by beating the Saints. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to have you with us tonight. We get a chance this evening to see two of the NFL's hottest teams. The Packers have won four of the last five. The Vikings have won four straight. As always, it's my pleasure to be working with Joe Theismann. And Joe, Don Mikowski, still not healthy enough to start, but Anthony Dillwig is no handicap at quarterback. Well, they really don't. The Packers don't take a step down. Dillwig is, is two victories in, uh, he's two out of three as far as a starter goes. He's playing really smart football. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. That's the one thing Lindy and Fawny said he liked about him. He's a very intelligent football player, has a great grasp of that particular offense that Fawny likes to move people around with. Green Bay won the first meeting between these teams 24 to 10. The Vikings haven't lost since then. They won four straight. What turned it around for them? A lot of different factors. First of all, Rich Gannon's playing very smart football. Here's a guy who threw 10 interceptions the first four games he played. He's only thrown two in the last four. Herschel Walker, well, they're giving Herschel Walker a chance to be Herschel Walker. And finally, that defense. They've scored four, three touchdowns in the last four games, led by Mike Merriweather, who last week had two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, a sack and a half, 12 total tackles. I mean, if he was a baseball player, he'd have hit for the cycle. It's an aggressive style of defense. Mike Merriweather's playing the kind of football that made him an all-pro when he was in Pittsburgh. All right, Joe, and there is Jerry Burns in his fifth year. He's helped bring this club back. Different attitude on the ball club now as they started one and six. And Lindy Infante, who in three years has turned the Green Bay team around. It's only three games under 500 now, 20 and 23 as the Packers head coach. Very innovative, very respected gentleman throughout the league for what he has been able to do with his offense. And we have a sellout crowd of more than 63,000, including that guy to watch what has become a very critical wild card game in the NFC Central. Green Bay won the toss. They will receive the opening kickoff. That's Fouad Reves will do the kicking duties tonight for the Vikings. He was picked up when Donald Igwebuike was charged with heroin trafficking. You know, Mike, it's interesting. I always felt like when I came in to another team's ballpark, I like to get on the field first as a quarterback. This will settle down Anthony Dillwig and give him a chance to get comfortably involved in the game. Charles Wilson is the deep man. He's waiting at the two-yard line. Line drive kick gets by Wilson into the end zone. And the Packers will start from the 20-yard line. And now for tonight's diehard starting lineups. Anthony Dillwig starts as the Packers quarterback to the injured Don Mikowski. If he had enough attempts, Dillwig would be the third highest rated quarterback in the conference. Sterling Sharp is his big play man. He has 52 catches this season. 90 last year led the league. After a wasted rookie year, Tony Mandrich is the starter at right tackle. He still isn't a consummate pass blocker, but look out when they run. Haddock and Woodside. The running backs are split. Now Woodside goes in motion. Haddock. Waiting for him is Noga. Got back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Without Keith Millard, Chris Dolman is the impact player for the Vikings up front. He leads the club with eight sacks. Mike Merriweather is back to his Pro Bowl form. He is the leading tackler and, as Joe said, was awesome against the Bears. Their defensive leader, Joey Browner, has raised his level of play during this win streak. He was November's Defensive Player of the Month in the conference. And only one short of a career number of interceptions for a season. They'll give Haddock a gain after the 22 and make a second and eight. Woodside as the Packers try to establish the ground game. And Woodside across the 25 to about the 27. Joey Browner was waiting for. Don Mikowski on the sidelines listening in, not even dressed. I don't think Lindy and Fondy wanted the temptation 
if anything did happen to Dillwig, that he would go into the game. There you see him signaling the, the plays in. I always felt it was very important, even if you weren't there, that you were involved in it. By signaling in, you're thinking the game. You really aren't missing much except the physical part of it. Herman Fontenot has checked into the backfield on third and three, and the pack will go with four wide receivers. They like to throw to Fontenot out of the backfield. Dillwig dumps it off short. That's where he's got the first down to the 31-yard line. Michael Brim made the tackle. Query with blazing speed. Big play kind of guy. Well, the thing is, Mike, you know, you get back in a shotgun. Minnesota doesn't want to blitz. They feel like they can put pressure with that front four. Their Noga tries to spin. Query just runs really right across the line of scrimmage, picks up only two or three yards, but it's enough for the first down. This is in Fonte's offense. Very innovative. Used it in the USFL. Been a success wherever he has gone and caught it. Haddix. Deuce Bobbick hit him two yards in the backfield. Plan B guy out of Houston a year ago. This is the philosophy of Floyd Peters and that Minnesota defense. They, they move the under tackle. Look at him get off the ball. That's Al Noga getting off the ball and slamming it. Deuce back comes in. What they want to do is they want to plug up the holes. I feel like the Vikings are saying to the Packers, if you're going to beat us, you're going to have to beat us throwing the football. We're not going to let you run it. Of course, the Packers came in here with the idea of establishing their ground game to loosen up the secondary. Second and 12, Green Bay on its opening possession. Dillwig with time, throws to Sterling Sharp, 40, 30, hit from behind and drops it to 26 by Browner. A 44-yard gain. Part of putting pressure on a quarterback is you can't give him time there. Sterling does a nice job around Rutland. He fakes the out. Uh-oh, he bought. It's a, just an out and up on the inside. Joey Browner got caught up inside a little bit. Sterling Sharp is playing with three cracked ribs, the eighth, ninth, and tenth ribs on his left side. There you see him now. He just isn't, doesn't have that freedom. He'll protect it. Sharp said it's the first time since he was in high school he missed practice because of an injury. And he didn't practice much at all this week. Dillwig goes for the timeout. Did not like the defensive package he saw on the field. When we come back, the Packers will have the ball at the Viking 27. The Subaru legacy is a lot larger than the older Subaru. But people still think we're small and boxy. The Subaru legacy is plush and comfortable. But people still think we're just basic transportation. With 93% registered in the last 10 years, still on the road, we hope our old image wears out a lot faster than our cars do. You've heard it said before. It's not just what you say. It's how you say it. Laser jet printers from Hewlett Packard. They'll get you noticed. Soldier Field, Chicago. Over 300 dead batteries and one die-hard battery. Our most powerful ever jump starts every one. Die hard. More power when you need it most. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Subaru. We build our reputation by building a better car by Hewlett Packard laser jet printers. They'll get you noticed. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. And that's the Basilica of St. Mary's in downtown Minneapolis, the first Basilica in the nation. Where's the other? It's the first. <laughs> I don't know how many they are. We, we don't give you all the information you need. Packers first and tennis at 27, had its long setback. Four-man rush. Dillwig with time. 
too high, incomplete, intended for Keith Woodside. See, covered by Jerry, uh, excuse me, covered by Daryl Fullington. You know, Mike, it looked to me like they lined up in the same formation that they did before he called the timeout. I just don't like the idea of burning the timeout this early in the quarter, especially when you're not in obvious scoring range. See with the two wide receivers lined up to the left. It was the same formation he had before. Now he's looking for the motion. He doesn't get it. Not necessarily his fault, but I still would like to see him not burn the timeout. Second and 10 from the 27. Had it. Ken Clark was the first one to bang into him, and then he got some help. Henry Thomas, number 97, came over. Thomas has moved from the nose tackle spot over to what in the standard lineup is the right tackle because Millard was hurt. Basically and called the under tackle mm -hmm. in that defense. And then uh, Ken Clark is on the nose. Henry is really playing where Keith Millard played. And uh, it's an adjustment for everybody up front. Millard was not only their uh, disruptive individual, sometimes all over the place, but a spiritual leader. Packers doing very well in third down long yardage situations this year. Fourth in the NFL. They face third and eight here. Four-man rush. Dillwig airs it out. Almost picked off, and now it is. Andre McMillan off the tip. Makes his second interception of the season, and that ball was badly thrown. What happened, Mike, is they ran a, a, they dragged somebody underneath, and all three defenders went with the man in the corner. It was great reaction by Joey Browner and, and as well as McMillan. If you take a look at this, what happens is these three receivers are responsible for these men here. This man will go underneath, the corner guy, everybody takes off deep with him. There's the man underneath gone. Now look at every, they let the guy underneath go. Ball's not only underthrown, but he had too many people around him. That was only Dilwig's third interception this year. He has been mistake free for this club. Again to throw on first down. Dumps it off to Anderson on the screen. Follows his blockers well and has the first down, but there is a flag on the play. In fact, there are two of them. Herschel Walker absolutely tackled Tim Harris. Yeah, he did. I mean, it was, Tim was like two steps past him. He turned around and, and tackled him. Holding, 34 offense, still first down. Well, Herschel doesn't get a million dollars a year because he's a great blocker. No, I'll tell you something, though. I don't even think they should call this holding. They ought to call this maiming or tackling. Here, here's the move by Harris. Now, here it is. Not one hand, two hands. He disappears from the picture. That will set the Vikings back to the 10-yard line first and 20. If I'm a quarterback, I'll never get upset at a guy doing that, protecting my backside. Back. Anderson. He's got about three. Johnny Holland made the tackle. Rich Gannon is the Vikings quarterback. He's led them to four straight wins. He is no longer making the big mistake. Herschel Walker has come alive. 357 all-purpose yards in the last two games. He leads the NFL in that category. It's a good line anchored by Gary Zimmerman, a three-time pro bowler. He is playing tonight with a broken hand. Second and 17, Vikings. John Patterson in on the defensive line for Green Bay. Gannon wants another screen. Anderson. Tremendous defensive play by Chuck Cecil. The free safety got by the blockers and made the stop. For the Packers up front, Bob Nelson makes a lot of tackles for a nose man. He has always carried the label of an overachiever. Tim Harris is the big play man on defense. He leads the team in sacks, but the total is well below last year when he was a consensus All-Pro. The secondary has given up a lot of yardage, but 11-year veteran Mark Lee is having a great season. He is playing at a Pro Bowl level. Third and 15, Minnesota. Allen Rice comes in. He's number 36 for the Vikings. And they go with four wide receivers. I 
don't envision that's the way that Jerry Burns wanted his offense to get started. A holding penalty, not much of a run, a great play on defense, and a fumble from the snap from center. Now, if Rich Cannon had just taken over for Wade Wilson, you could say, well, that's something you're not used to, but he's been there nine weeks. He really didn't expect the snap from center. He was still looking downfield, thinking about the coverage, wasn't really expecting the ball. Newsom will punt. He's seventh in the conference with a 42-yard average. And Jeff Query waiting at the 40. Beautiful punt by Newsom. Query trying to cut it back, only gets two yards. Brought down by Brett Novoselsky, the backup tight end. Excellent job on special teams. We're scoreless in the first quarter at Minnesota. <laughs> This game is brought to you in your local cable system by your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Stop by and check out the Chrysler Advantage. Right now, just underway, it's one incredible advantage clearance at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Huge inventories of Plymouth Voyagers have forced us to take action. So for a limited time only, you can get spectacular deals on the front-wheel drive minivan that drives like a car. Pick one out and get on-the-spot financing. Then drive home a roomy seven-passenger van. You can't afford to pass this up. Go see your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers now, where you have all the advantages, except time. See your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealer. It sets free the artist in you. It's a winner in paradise. Missouri Lottery wants to send you to Hawaii. All you have to do is send in any losing Missouri Lottery ticket or fax somebody along with your name, address, and phone number and watch a Sunday night NFL game on ESPN. We'll draw five lucky winners each week. These weekly winners will win free sports apparel and register to win the grand prize. A trip for two to Hawaii to see the Pro Bowl in February. Just mail your entry in any losing Missouri Lottery ticket or fax somebody to this address and watch NFL on ESPN each week to see if you have won. One lucky winner will send winner in paradise and we'll draw the winner on December 23rd. 7.21 to go, first quarter, Green Bay and Minnesota scoreless. That gentleman seated in the wheelchair is Bob Wheeland, who has uh, is a Vietnam vet, lost both his legs in the war, and Lindy and Fonny are on the plane going to Phoenix a couple weeks ago, hired him as an assistant coach, uh, assistant administrator, assistant strength coach. He is not their good luck charm, although they've won 3-0 and since he's been, been 3-0 and since he's around. Just been a great inspiration, this football team. And the guy can lift. Packers take over their second possession from their own 42. Bill Wig to the sideline and completes it to Woodside coming out of the backfield. They've set Woodside on a wing several times and left Haddix as the sole setback. Woodside out of Texas A&M getting a lot bigger chance to play, of course, with the departure of Brent Fullwood. Bull with a pro bowler a year ago. Took himself out of the game in the second half of the Chicago Bears game. Said he had a bad stomach and couldn't play. Three hours later, they saw him in a disco and they said, here's the ticket to the bus station. I'll get you a bus ticket. Second and three. Bill Wick lost the handle. That was ruled a fumble. That was ruled a fumble. Vikings football. Dillwig commits his second turnover, and Mark Dusbovic makes the recovery. Mike Merriweather has really come on, plays that outside linebacker, away from the tight end. Here comes the pressure, putting the pressure on him. Nobody ever gets a chance on him. He just scared him. I mean, he didn't even hit him. He just scared him. A, a scared forced fumble. Scare me. <laughs> he has scared me, I can tell you. Dillwick tries to pull it back in and uh, really loses the ball. What they're going to look at, though, is that whenever your arm starts forward, it's considered a forward pass. And this happens when it, you're dealing with exchanges or possession or touchdowns. If his arm was going forward at all, it should be an incompletion. 
The replay another. official is Al Sabato is taking a look at it right now. Now watch his arm. His arm going forward? Yeah, that's going to be. I don't believe it was hit. His, his, his arm's coming forward. It's an incompleted pass. Even if it starts moving Even at all. if he's trying to stop the Doesn't motion. matter. If the motion is forward, you can throw it underhand, throw it any way you want. If it hits the ground, it's an un incomplete pass. There's Al Sabato. It was obvious. After here. further review, the play stands as called. Fumble. I didn't think they could reverse it, Joe. Well, I think what they felt is that on the way back, he lost it. Now, here it is again. You can't tell. We saw from the other shot, Merriweather never hits it. Now, they say it's out of his hand at that point. i got to be honest with you. I disagree. I think that was a forward pass incomplete. But the Vikes got the ball. They have the ball just in Green Bay territory. Walker reversed to A.C. Carter with Gannon leading. And Carter will get 10. Mark Lee forced him out of bounds. Not a bad play. You know you're trying to get Herschel in the game, so you give it to him and then hand it off on the reverse. And when I talked to the Green Bay defensive people and coaches, they felt like they had to take Herschel out of the game. They want Gannon to beat him throwing the ball and getting the ball to AC, but I don't think they want it to happen this way with them running on reverses. Rich Gannon out front making the block. There, this is great as a quarterback. You love it. Let me find somebody to hit. All right. Wasn't great, but he tried. First down, spotted to Packers 39. Anderson dragging Tim Harris with him to the 35-yard line. Anderson playing. Rick Fenney still hurt. Injured a knee. And we've got a little extra emotion involved early. There's no love loss between these two football teams. No matter which ball club you talk to, they talk about... The Packers, the Vikings, and the Bears, whenever those three teams lock up in some way, shape, or form, all the, all the gloves come off. Everybody wants at each other's throat. Well, Tim Harris, in his own admission, tends to liven up the situation, too. You know, he, he doesn't breathe. He never takes a breath. He just talks. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when we sat with him. Gannon, short drop, trying to throw for Carter. He really got a shot from Chuck Cecil after the incompletion. This will bring up a third and long. All the years I've been doing the Vikings, the last five years, they love to get Anthony Carter the ball in these quick posts. There he is, but Cecil has other uh, things in mind. He feels like he wants to lay a little lumber, let AC know that if he does come in the middle, somebody's going to be waiting for him. Boy, that one will get you two aspirins. Nobody has ever questioned Cecil's ability as a player. They just say he's injury prone, and it's tough to count on him all the time. When he's healthy, he's good. Deanna goes to the shotgun with four wide receivers. Gannon chased out of the pocket, got away from Harris, dives to the 26-yard line. He has a first down. Gain of 10, Cecil made the stop again, and Gannon comes up a little bit ornery. That's the one thing that Rich Gannon brings this football team. Actually, Wade Wilson, he both bring it. A mobile quarterback. He doesn't like what he sees. If he feels a blitz coming, and he knows the receivers are locked up one-on-one -on -one with defensive backs, and he gets a little crease. He feels he can pick up eight to 10 yards easy. Vikings on the ground so far, five carries, 26 yards. Herschel has not carried it except on the reverse that he handed off. And there's Gannon's stats through the eight games that he started. And uh, the quarterbacks are directly related to the success of football teams. And I'm sure that's an understatement, but it's a fact. Was Gannon thrown into the breach because of the injury to Wade Wilson? For a walker in the flat, and he dropped it. Had Anderson out there blocking for him, but the Packers covered it pretty well. Yeah. And Cecil doing a little talking to Herschel. I mean, he, he just, anybody in purple. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets knocked out of bounds. He's going to yell at somebody over on the bench, too. That ball was thrown just a bit hard. The perfect spot to put it right in front of a back. That's the toughest throw in football for a quarterback as well. To put a little touch on it, make sure the guy is turning up field so his back's not to the line of scrimmage. But that one had too much heat on it. 
So much pressure on Herschel Walker after that trade. Everybody thought he'd come in here with an S on his chest. He certainly has it. Second and ten. Packers show blitz. Throw to Walker again. Can't hold this one. Covered by Johnny Holland. And the crowd shows its displeasure. I don't necessarily agree that you want to try and force the ball to Herschel Walker early throwing it to him. I mean, if you want to, split him out and let him give him a chance to make a good catch and get into it. So far, he has not carried the ball once on a running play. And they've tried to get it to him on two pretty hard passes. I think it's, a, it's tough for back in ball. Well, they've been going out of a split back set, and Herschel Walker has never been a back that runs well out of a split set. He's an eye back. Third and ten, Gannon to the gun. Looks at the flat again. Throws for Rice down the sideline, and complete flag is down. Cecil and Burnell Dent were over there on the coverage. And here's the call from Johnny Greer. Pass interference. 56 defense. Push down. Burnell Dent, the five-year linebacker out of Tulane, commits the violation, and it's an automatic first down at the 12. Gannon does a good job avoiding the rush. Slides outside, makes the throw upfield. Now there you see the right hand holding him back. Oh, oh. Hey, Rice did a nice job of selling it too. Part Boy, of this game is salesman. He had to sell that one. Gannon on the roll, throws incomplete. Trying to throw for Hassan Jones. Looked like Scott Steven may have tipped it away. It's a good thing, too, because Hassan Jones, what Gannon wanted to do was throw the ball to Hassan in the flat. Hassan felt the sidelines and turned it up. That ball could have been uh, gone into the wrong hands had it not been tipped. Could have been 95 the other way. There's the story. 450 to go first quarter. We are scoreless, but the Vikings threatening. In a the game, they desperately need to get to 500. Anderson, nice hole, got him to the seven-yard line. Noble and Holland were in on the stop along with Cecil coming up for his free safety spot. Jerry Burns has got a very interesting offensive staff now uh, with Tom Moore coming over as the offensive coordinator, Bob Schnelker, who's up in the booth, who was the offensive coordinator, Mark Tressman, who was an offensive coordinator, <laughs> coached here before. I mean, and, of course, Burnsy... Uh, being an offensive coordinator with the Vikes for a long time. I mean, you're, you're really talking about um, offense by committee. The Vikings, the best in the league inside the 20-yard line. We take the third and five here. Gannon knocked away, intended for Chris Carter, and right there was Mark Lee. We told you before, having the best season of his career. Chris Carter, when he was with the Philadelphia Eagles, made a living off of this play. The one thing Gannon doesn't do is he doesn't get it out far enough, and he doesn't get it up high enough to give Carter a chance to get up. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. You put it up, he'll muscle it away from most people. See how flat the ball's coming in? That ball's got to come in like you're shooting it into a basketball hoop. Quad Reves out of the hold of Harry Newsom will try a 24-yard field goal. He's hit four or five since joining the club. Whistles blow, they'll stop this one. Little twitch by the left side or left guard of the uh, Vikings field goal team. False start, 69 offense. Simulating the start of a play. Fourth down. Todd Kalis, the right guard. He simulated the start of a play. Does that mean he moved? I hope I'm so. Yes, and I mean, you know. So now it'll be a 29-yarder for Reves. Had four good years with Miami, was out of the game a year ago. 
through on that one. And the Vikings get on the board first. Four minutes to go first quarter. 3 nothing, Minnesota. Come on, mates. I've got a surprise for you. What's the surprise? I'll show you. Whoa! Look, Bernard. It's ours. Just for the holidays at McDonald's, you can get Bernard. Or Miss Bianca. The famous heroes from Walt Disney Pictures' new animated feature, The Rescuers Down Under. Now in theaters everywhere. One ornament's free when you buy a $5 book of McDonald's gift certificates. Or $1.49 with any food purchase. Very handsome, but I prefer the real one. Call me irresponsible. Just because the other guy is on the road doesn't mean his mind is. So the superb traction of the Subaru Legacy with four-wheel drive and anti-lock brakes can be quite a comfort. After all, since the next guy is capable of almost anything, shouldn't the same be true of your next car? have looked newer longer ever since. 3M, innovation working for you. Two of the country's top conferences battle head-to-head -head in the ACC Big East Challenge. The action starts as Virginia faces Pittsburgh Monday night at 7 Eastern live on ESPN. They're dressed warmly after all it is Minneapolis. And it's 3-0 Vikings with four minutes to go first quarter. Reves to kick off. The deep man. Wilson. Scores four yards deep in the end zone. He'll bring it out. And did not make the 20. Buried at the 15-yard line. He violated a cardinal rule and paid for it. Deuce Bobic down on special teams with a big hit. It's an old-fashioned Christmas at Poco Loco Western Town. From December 1st through January 5th, Poco Loco presents Love in Lights. Formerly displayed at Butler Hill and I-55, this fabulous collection of thousands of Christmas lights have been relit. Bring the whole family Sunday through Thursdays from 5 p.m. till 10.30 or Friday and Saturday till 11.30. Special group rates are available for Monday and Tuesday evenings, so call now for reservations. 677-5555. Poco Loco Western Town. Take Highway 30 West to High Ridge Boulevard and follow the signs. I check for a living, and I've been checking out the deals at your Midwest GMC dealers. This Safari minivan is a real performer. Roomy interior, rear anti-lock brakes, and 4.3 liter V6 power are standard. All wheel drives, tow packages, acres of conversions. Hundreds to choose from. Your Midwest GMC dealers, another reason why GMC vans are number one. Check them out. Only at Bellman GMC in North County, Bomarito GMC in Ellisville, and Brockland GMC in Fairmont City, Illinois. Check Cashing Company, we cash every kind of check. Our St. Charles Rock Road store now open 24 hours a day. We never close, no ID required. Free money orders with every check cash. Americans Check Cashing Company, just minutes east of Northwest Plaza. Now open 24 hours, we never close. Americans Check Cashing Company, visit our second store at 2138 First Capitol Drive in St. Charles. 3.50 to go. First quarter, Minnesota on the board with a field goal over Green Bay. Keith Millard in the picture. Of course, the, one of the missing ingredients of that Minnesota defense. Fifth on the Vikings' all-time list of career sacks. Uh, had the same surgery Rich Cannon had. Told me he's going to be back in about three weeks. Uh, and he tries to help out on the sidelines because it's tough to see what's going on in the tackles. But he really tries to talk to the defensive ends when they come off, talk to Dolman, talk to uh, Henry Thomas, Hank, Kenny Clark, uh, Al Noga, and help out. But it's very important when you're hurt that you select the proper wardrobe because you know you're going to be on TV, especially when you're a big star like he. He had 18 sacks last year, was the NFC Defensive Player of the Year, and he earned it. An absolutely brilliant defensive player. Darrell Thompson into the game as the sole setback for the first time, and he'll get his first carry. The rookie out of Minnesota 
goes for about nine, horse collared by Browner. And dragged down there. Talk about safeties in the National Football League. Two names come to mind, and you can argue which one's the best. Ronnie Lott, Joey Browner. Uh, both of them belong on a par. They're both of, of, I mean, they are the best that play this game. But Joey Browner has such tremendously strong hands. When he gets you, you're not getting away. Well, I'll take either one of them. I'm not going to trade either. Second and a yard. Thompson again, trying for the first down, has it, and more. This young man has quite a future out of the University of Minnesota first round draft choice we remind you that our coverage of the nfl begins every sunday with game day noon eastern chris time and pete preview all the day's game then at seven it's prime time a wrap-up of everything that went on in pro football then at eight o'clock joe and i will be in miami next sunday night the eagles and the dolphins cunningham against marino two different styles beautiful to watch both looking forward to that one First and ten, Packer. Still with. Under pressure, Henry Thomas came clean and got it. Sack number six for Henry Thomas out of LSU. This was just a simple case of we don't have enough people. Look at all these people up front. The pack just don't have enough people up front to block everybody. Henry Thomas does a nice job of beating them. Whenever you give somebody one-on-one -on -one blocking assignments, it's tough. Watch from the right side the pressure. Anthony Dillard just doesn't stand a chance to get the ball off. It'll bring up a second and 18. And with Millard, when he comes back healthy, what a front four the Vikings have. Dillwood gets it to Kemp. Kemp runs through a couple of tackles. Merriweather and Brim brought him down as he reached the 37-yard line. 17-yard gain. That's the 34th catch of the year for Perry Kemp. He's been shut out the last couple of games. We always talk about, I mean, what you've heard about Anthony Dillwood is he's a very intelligent guy, very smart guy. Um, but he is one tough football player. Watch him standing. Noga just comes clean. He puts his shoulder right in his stomach. He takes a shot right in the gut and still hangs in there and makes the completion to Kemp. Boy, Kemp's a tough guy, too. He's the guy that you look for over the middle. Third and a yard. They were just shy of the first down. And they go to the shotgun on third and one. Five-man rush, loose football. There was a timeout before the snap. That's, or a delay, excuse me. That's why Dillwig didn't even go after the ball. He heard the whistle. He can see the clock. Don't forget, you only have 25 seconds, not 30 seconds. Delay before the snap. Offense. Still third down. One person that has been burdened by the change in the clock. We haven't noticed that much in the play of the game by the players. But the coaches getting the plays in from the sidelines, it's really affected them. And we see the clock down to one second or two seconds before the ball is snapped. Since it's gone from 30 to 25. Right. Coach Lindy and Fonny sending his plays in. Third and six now from the 32. Straight four-man rush and pressure. Bill Wade can run. Dives for the first down and has the loose ball picked up. Weary, he's got great speed. He's gone, but they'll bring it back. Weary just now finding out that he doesn't have the touchdown. And Gilrid just now finding out that he hit the ground. Merriweather made the big hit. On the field! Oh, what a gutsy play by Dillwig, sacrificing himself for the first down. Well, he knew what he needed to get the first down. Now he goes airborne, doesn't necessarily protect that ball like a running back. But watch, you'll see. The yep. ground cannot cause a fumble. 
Not that he, the ball hit first. His head hit about the same time. But here it is again, right there. You see the ground knock the ball out. Can't cause the fumble. Oh, what great hustle by Query and excellent hands. Up and over the top. He knows what he needs. Mike Merriweather on the hit. At the end of the first quarter of play from the Metrodome in Minneapolis, the Vikings leading the pack 3-0. You've heard it said before. It's not just what you say. It's how you say it. Laser jet printers from Hewlett Packard. Now when you buy an HP LaserJet 2P, you'll get a free paper cassette valued at $195. Visit your authorized Hewlett Packard dealer today. premium choice. If you're serious about whole grain, remember, Wheaties has it. These guys don't. Better get your whole grain. You better eat your Wheaties. The Subaru legacy is a lot larger than the older Subaru. But people still think we're small and boxy. The Subaru legacy is plush and comfortable. But people still think we're just basic transportation. With 93% registered in the last 10 years, still on the road. We hope our old image wears out a lot faster than our cars do. Set to start the second quarter here in Minneapolis. Green Bay with possession. First down near their own 40-yard line, trailing 3-0. That break came at a good time for Anthony Delway to get a chance to clear the cobwebs out after taking that shot in the head by the turf. And gave somebody a chance to go out and get a cheese hat. Thompson, a single setback. Three wide receivers. Delway has to scramble again. Plenty of time, now throws sideline and throws complete. Kemp was over there at the sideline, caught it, knocked out of bounds by Barry, and there is a flag down. When a quarterback scrambles, you just don't know as a lineman whether he's going to run or whether he's not, especially when he has the ability of a Dilwig who ran the time before. An eligible receiver downfield, number 63, still first down. Center James Campen. And you know what happens? Line, now, right now, they're going to get in the huddle, and Campen and the linemen are going to say to Dillwig, they're going to say, Anthony, listen, if you're going to run, yell. It's like you don't have enough to think of out there trying to save your life than to turn and run and say, okay, guys, I'm going now. And it's just a reaction. So they back it up to the Packers 29 yard line, first and 20. Dillwig hangs in the pocket this time, but throws low, intended for Clarence Weathers. Audrey McMillan was there on coverage. Weathers picked off the plan B list from Kansas City. Well, what a, what a story he is, too. And when he came into the game, he was out of football for three years, came into the game, they gave him a $250 dollar signing bonus. You thought I was going to say dollars. 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 $250 signing bonus. He said after taxes it was 183 Hardly worth writing the check, wasn't it? Still has it at home. That's going to be fun. Dillwig over the middle. Sterling Sharp makes the catch at the 47 yard line. But Carl Lee was all over him. He still caught it a gain of 17, his second grab of the night.
talked about Sterling Sharp playing with those cracked ribs. Doesn't seem to affect him much. Does a great job of stopping. Now, there are two best friends, Carl Lee and Sterling Sharp. They talked to each other on Thursday this week. Carl came over and had dinner with Sterling last night. But I'll guarantee you tonight, he doesn't want to do anything. He was the first Packer receiver ever to get 50 catches or more in his first three years. Third and three. Fontenot on the delay. Struggling to get there, did not make the first down stick. Excellent defense by the Vikings. Fontenot doesn't carry the ball very much, only his 10th of the year. Daryl Fullington was over there to make the big stop, and Henry Thomas hustled from his lineman spot. When I had a chance to visit with Daryl during the week, he talked about playing against this offense is very difficult because of all the movement. He said, you got to be a little more cautious up there. That time he read it and came hard. Don Bracken to punt to Leo Lewis. Bracken has struggled with his punting this year. Lewis has helped the Vikings on their punt return team, waived and re-signed. He's done a good job for him. Trying to get outside, flag is down. Nice return, a second flag goes down. A 17-yard return after a punt of 36, but we have to check out the penalties. Illegal block, number 30 on the return team. First down. It's still 3-0 at the Metrodome. We'll be back in a moment. Dedication to quality. It's one reason why the U.S. government awarded Cadillac the 1990 Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award. And it's why Cadillac stands as an American automotive standard for the world in performance, comfort, and safety. Evidence of the inherent value of a Cadillac. Value that inspires the highest owner loyalty of any leading luxury automobile. I'm going to review today's scores very briefly no, no, here. No, no. 86, 94, 92, and one hieroglyph. <laughs> <laughs> that was before we got to the back nine. <laughs> I didn't think anybody was keeping score. Call him, right? It says here <laughs> that on the third hole you hit... I know, you a 90 watch. yard putt. <laughs> <laughs> I do. It wasn't a flash. It Levi's 100% cotton dockers. If they're not dockers, they're just pants. Oh, there you go! Cost me the towel, please, Darnell. Die Hard, America's most trusted replacement battery. Its breakthrough design gives you more power and more confidence from the start. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. I used to have dandruff, so I tried head and shoulders. Then I tried Selsun Blue. Blue is better. Selsun Blue relieves dandruff flecking better than head and shoulders. And doctors recommend it more than head and shoulders, Danorex, and Tegrin. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. By Levi's Dockers. If they're not Dockers, they're just pants. And by the Die Hard Battery. Now with more power when you need it most. Vikings take over just outside their own 10-yard line, leading 3-0, 12.40 to go second quarter. Walker, the deep man, they play action to it. Anthony Carter, loose ball. And the Vikings recover Tim Irwin, the right tackle hustling downfield, covered it. Chuck Cecil came up to knock it away after Mark Lee had wrapped up Carter. That's the difference in a football team that's either gonna make it to the playoffs or not. One guy out there hustling a little bit more. Great job by Tim Irwin. AC makes the catch. Tries to pick up a few more yards. There's the ball, there's the tackle. Cecil again with the hit, ball comes down. Here comes Irwin from the right part of your screen. Great hustle by the lineman downfield. Irwin has started every game at right tackle since 1982. Walker, more of a running set, he gets the ball behind Anderson. 
that's where he's effective. Seven yards behind the line of scrimmage where he has a chance to find his hole and hit it. Gary Zimmerman with a nice block for it. The Budweiser storyline from the Metrodome so far, the Packers have been their own worst enemy. Two turnovers. The Vikings had a nice drive that resulted in a field goal for our only score. That was the first time Herschel Walker has crossed the line of scrimmage, 11 yards on that carry. And Green Bay dominating the passing statistics, but they're not on the board. Walker again, the deep man in the eye. Instead, they give it to Anderson. Gaping hole for him as all eyes were on Herschel Walker. He gets to the 44, a gain of 13. Brian Noble made the tackle. You set it up, you tease him a little bit, you give him Herschel Walker on a pitch, you line up in the same formation, and what you do is then you give the ball to Alfred Anderson up the middle. Look at the job by the line up front. Boy, Zimmerman, McDaniel, Loudermill, Kalis, and Irwin just blowing out that side. Look at the hole they create. Anderson does a good job of covering up going through. Anderson can carry the ball for a rookie over 700 yards, but his numbers have gone down since then. Play action, takes to Walker. Now they throw to Herschel. Forced out of bounds at the 48-yard line. The coverage by Scott Stevenson, or Scott Steven, who's getting a chance to play because John Anderson retired. Talking to the offensive coaches of the Vikings, they felt Tim Harris had to be taken out of the game. First, he gets blocked by Zimmerman. Then he gets a block thrown on him by Anderson. Then Zimmerman comes around to pick him up again. I mean, they are going to identify and find Tim Harris on the field every play. Make sure he doesn't get the gap. All they have to do is listen. He'll let him know where he is. <laughs> they don't even have to look for the numbers. That's a lot. He says he loves to play the Vikings because they hate his guts. Herschel. Broke a tackle, got to the 49-yard line. Patterson was over there to bring him down. Herschel Walker, Bo Jackson, um, Eric Dickerson, Bart Simpson, or one of them. Really. Anytime these guys get their hands on the ball, you hear a silence. Everybody holds their breath just to wait and see if they're going to pop it and turn that speed on. Sterling Sharp with some autographs. That's of every guy on the team in his number. There you see Euchre, Ard, Bush, Green. All of them signed in. Third and four Vikings. Gannon look to the front and throw short and Carter can't hold it. Brian Noble was there, but it was a catchable ball. And AC could not hang on. Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator, has designed this offense to protect Gannon a little bit, try and run the ball more, take the pressure off him, let him try and make the third and four, third and five throws, and uh, done a real good job controlling the game plan for the Vikings. Newsom will punt to the conference's fourth leading punt return man, Jeff Query. Steps up to the 15-yard line. No place to go, got outside the house. Nice job by Query with a little stutter step. A return to five after a 35-yard punt. 9.15 to go first half. It's the Packers and the Vikings. It's 3-0 Minnesota. This portion of the NFL on ESPN is brought to you locally in part by your Midwest GMC truck dealers. Bomarito, Brocklin, and Belmont GMC, where the trucks and vans are. It sets free the artist in you. Ho, 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 ho. Popeyes has a holiday package just for you. Ten pieces of Popeyes own chicken with all the trimmings for only $8.99. Ten tasty pieces of chicken, four hot buttermilk biscuits, and a big helping of Popeyes red beans and rice. After all, it is the season to be given. So treat your family to Popeyes chicken and trimmings for only $8.99. You'll love that chicken from Popeyes. Ho, ho, ho. 
Well, you just gotta check her, now you need the dough But there's no time to waste, cause you're on the go If you're on vacation or you're far from home There's only seven numbers on your telephone Go national, check caption, go to national Check caption, go national When you need it fast, we're America's place for It's the cash, yeah Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann with you from the Metrodome where the Vikings are leading three to nothing. Uh, why you, the football? Bet you wonder why I'm sitting here. I do. Joey Browner told me something very interesting. When a defensive back tries to read a quarterback, everybody talks about reading the eyes. Well, that's not the case with Joey Browner. He reads his posture. And by that, he means when a quarterback's going to throw the ball short, he holds the ball down lower and he doesn't have to throw it as far. If he wants to throw the ball deep, he gets it up a little bit higher so that the shoulder can come up and he has a chance to throw the ball further down the field. So instead of watching eyes, he watches the posture. One of the things that has made him an all-pro. Packers go to the ground. Thompson diving forward to the 25-yard line, covered there by Pullington. Thompson, of course, played here. This was his home field as the all-time leading rusher for the Minnesota Golden Gophers and has the second longest run from scrimmage in the history of this building. 98 yards. Dorsett went 99 one time. It was on a Monday night game, as I remember. Haddock and Woodside are the backs, and now Woodside goes out as a wide receiver. Dillwood with good time, throws to West, his tight end has the first down at the 34-yard line. Ed West makes his 14th catch of the year, Lee and Ray Berry make the stop. Everybody talks about wide receivers blowing off the ball, get off the ball. Lindy and Fonny has a very interesting approach. Watch these two wide receivers come off and read the defense. You don't have to, see how, they're just cruising. They're just cruising, and all it is is a five-yard route. And what they do is they react to the defense. That pattern has a name, and it's called the smash route. Dillwig, six out of nine, 98 yards. The first time he's thrown to a tight end tonight. Dillwig over the middle to Sterling Sharp. Rutland brings him down, but not until he reaches the 45. And it looks like he has another first down. Sterling Sharp, one-on-one. -on -one. See how he uses his hands initially? Look at that. He's just a great receiver. Doesn't let the ball get to his body. Grasps it in his hands first, then brings it into his body. Very strong runner, too, after he catches. Loves to catch the ball oh, in the middle of the field. Great guy to talk to. Fifth in the conference and catches. Third in yardage coming into this weekend. It is the first down. Paddock. With a head of steam, plows forward into Minnesota territory at the 48. Ken Clark, the nose man, brought him down. Haddock says, blocking has kept me in this league for a long time, but he can still run it. Ed West, or Harris, I should say. You know, Ed West does a nice job turning out through Spavik. See, that's all you have to do. The game is not all power. The tackles like to pancake people and kill them. The, the tight ends, they like to be able just to position a linebacker, get the guy at least to get by you. Second and four, Green Bay. Play action by Dillwood. Throws and Woodside had it behind him and couldn't hold it. Woodside was open and looked like he would have had the first down. Fullington was out there. Well, that's a nice route. You run play action to the short side of the field. You bring your receivers, you bring your back and the other receiver across the field, and you have what is basically a tier. You got the back down low, the crossing back in the middle, and the guy clear, and if he gets a, a chance, you can pop it up deep. I would think about any quarterback would like to play in this offense. There are a couple of them out there. Today. Joe uh, Gibbs with the, with the Redskins, great offense. Lindy and Fonny, great offense. Sam White, great offense. Five-man rush. Dillwick stands in the pocket and throws, but behind Weathers incomplete. And Dillwick took a shot as he got rid of that. One. 
A lot of pressure being put on by that front four. Every one of the front four of the Vikings went in there. There's Henry Thomas coming off, getting some high fives and grasps. He wears those gloves for an interesting reason. He says he, he breaks his nails if, if he doesn't. That's why the guy wears gloves, so his nails don't get broken. <laughs> he usually has them a little longer, but he doesn't want to break them, so he wears gloves. Lewis waiting from the punt for from Don Bracken, end over end. Lewis is the 15 and thrown to the ground immediately. Charles Wilson, a backup wide receiver, was right there. Held the return to zero after a punt of 33. There are those who thirst for something different. Something beyond the ordinary. For them, there is a beer that refreshes like no other. Michelob Dry. Once you've experienced its bold taste with no aftertaste, there's no going back. <clears throat> America's most successful luxury automobiles, the Cadillac, DeVille, and Fleetwood, gain new stature with a new, more powerful V8. Standard anti-lock brakes, combined with the largest interiors of any front-drive sedans. A balance of power and luxury in which neither is compromised from Cadillac. Winner of the U.S. government's 1990 Malcolm Baldrige National Quality Award. You've heard it said before. It's not just what you say. It's how you say it. Laser jet printers from Hewlett Packard. Now when you buy an HP LaserJet 2P, you'll get a free paper cassette valued at $195. Visit your authorized Hewlett Packard dealer today. Friday, the Golden Bear leads the PGA Tour's finest at the Sazali Classic. Then the Mary Max and Arnie headline the field at the GTE Kaanapali Classic. It all starts at 2 Eastern live on ESPN. 5.47 to go, first half, Minnesota hanging on to a 3-0 lead over Green Bay. And there is Tom War, one of uh, three, or if you count Jerry Burns, four former offensive coordinators. Well, he is the offensive coordinator. Of course, all those years with the Steelers, four Super Bowl rings. Uh, could be one of those great candidates for a head coaching job in this league someday. First and 10 Vikings from the 15. Walker in the eye, play action to him. Gannon deep over the middle, too high intended for Leo Lewis. I don't feel like that's the kind of pass that Richie Gannon at this stage of his career is really capable of throwing well. I think that he has to confine himself to either letting it go set up and let it go deep down the sideline on goes or else take the backs underneath. Get the ball to Steve Jordan who really has almost become a forgotten man here in Minnesota. Gannon so far only 3 out of 10, 21 yards. There you see the numbers on it. Not all his fault either. He's had a couple drops. Yes, he has. Tiger Green is into the Packers secondary as an extra defensive back on second and 10. Anderson. Good tackle by Scott Steven to bring him down as he got up just shy of the 20-yard line. And there is Wade Wilson, who got up to a great start this year and then was injured. Feel really sorry for him because he had such a battle with Tommy Kramer for years and years to get the start. Uh, each year I'd come up here to do a game or a couple of Minnesota games, you could see the look in Wade's eyes. He finally got the job and wound up being injured. He is the starting quarterback, but Burns, he's not going to switch away from a hot hand. And right now, Gannon's dealing the hot hand. And Wade agrees with him. He said, I wouldn't make a change right now. Third and six, but he is ready to play. Flag down. And jumping offside was Sean Patterson, number 96. Who plays in passing situations on the Packer defensive line. Defense. Five yard penalty. You know, you always wonder, how can a guy so close to the football be the one that jumps off sides? Well, all the quarterback has to do is make a voice inflection. Right part of your screen. Watch this. It's going to be a great move. It's going to be a slap with the left hand and a, a right arm over. But uh, you got to do it after the ball is snapped, not before the ball is snapped. 
So now it's third and less than a yard. And to the shotgun, they'll give it to Wright. First down to the 27-yard line. Certainly on third and less than a yard, when you line up in the shotgun, it gives the defense something to think about. I, I'll tell you what else it does, Mike, is it forces those ends, especially when you're playing like a 3-4 and you're putting in nickel personnel. Look at the splits. Look at how wide those ends have to be out. You've really only got three people within about a 10-yard area to defend the field. Puts a lot of pressure on them. Clock running, 4.08 to go in the half. Vikings three, Packers nothing, Gannon to throw. Looking for Carter. Great coverage by Mark Lee. And Lee won the flag. College basketball comes your way this week as we go to the ACC Big East Challenge starting Monday night. Virginia against Pittsburgh. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Then Tuesday, Clemson and Seton Hall. North Carolina State against number 7, Syracuse. Wednesday, Georgia Tech, St. John, Duke, Georgetown. Then Thursday, Wake Forest against Villanova and North Carolina against UConn. What a great idea. The ACC Big East Challenge. Second and ten with split backs. Gannon has to roll. Dumps it off. Anderson on the screen. A delayed screen set up very well. They get it out to about the 33-yard line. Patterson makes the tackle, hustling back from his left end spot. I love it. That was good execution by the offense and good execution by the defense, which amounts to about a five-yard game. Gannon did the right thing, allowing the defense to come in, get close to him. Some of the Packers hung back on the line, sensing the screen, only allowing Anderson to pick up five yards. Defensively, it's been a very well-played game for both teams. Third and four. The winner stays alive in the race for the wild card. The loser might be in a lot of trouble. Inside hand off to Rice. Forced outside. Flag is down. So is Rice at the 34-yard line. And it looks like we'll get a holding call on that one. Blaze winner number 68 was in there along with Burnell Dent. Vikings playing sloppy football. Putting the ball on the ground. Penalties. Uh, bad passes. A lot of little things. They're really out of sync offensively. Holding. 64. Offense. It's declined. Fourth down. Randall McDaniel, the outstanding young guard out of Arizona State, a first-round draft choice in 88. And the Vikings will have to kick it away on fourth and four. Newsom on the field. He's number 18. And Query waits at his own 22-yard line. Outstanding punt return there. Newsom, line drive kick, Query chases it all the way back to the 18. And dives forward to the 38-yard line. A return of 20 after a 47-yard punt. Deuce Bobbick again on special teams for Minnesota. Right now, just underway, it's one incredible advantage clearance at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Huge inventories of Plymouth Voyagers have forced us to take action. So for a limited time only, you can get spectacular deals on the front-wheel drive minivan that drives like a car. Pick one out and get on-the-spot financing. Then drive home a roomy seven-passenger van. You can't afford to pass this up. Go see your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers now, where you have all the advantages, except time. See your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealer. It's a winner in paradise. Missouri Lottery wants to send you to Hawaii. All you have to do is send any losing Missouri Lottery ticket or fax somebody along with your name, address, and phone number and watch a Sunday night NFL game on ESPN. We'll draw five lucky winners each week. These weekly winners will win free sports apparel and register to win the grand prize. A trip for two to Hawaii to see the Pro Bowl in February. Just mail your entry in any losing Missouri Lottery ticket or fax somebody to this address and watch NFL on ESPN each week to see if you have won. One lucky winner will send winner in paradise and we'll draw the winner on December 23rd. Glasses sure had its moments. I remember the cool look. 
the sexy look, and of course, the sophisticated look. No matter what, I hated wearing glasses. That's why I finally had my nearsightedness corrected surgically by a procedure called radial keratotomy. Now, I have the look I like best. For information, call Eagle Eye Care at 861-1100 or 1-800-872-4090. Two thirty-six to go. First half, three nothing Vikings. And Anthony Dillwig drafted in the third round out of Duke in 1989 by Green Bay. Maybe destined to be a Packer. Certainly has a family connection with the club. His grandfather, Lavi Dillwig, played for the Packers for seven years. He was chosen to the, on their all-time teams, tight end. Have to work on his shoulders a little bit now if you want to be a tight end. Yeah. Maddox, the single setback. Four-man rush. Dillwood with time. Airs it out intended for Sharp. And he knocked it away from Rutland. Excellent defensive play by Sterling Sharp. Rutland had great position. I don't believe that Anthony Dillwood, you're going to see him throwing that he doesn't get the ball out far enough. This ball's got to get up and down in a hurry. Sharp is trying to lull Rutland to sleep, but there they go. By looking back at the ball, you can have what's called, quote unquote, incidental contact. He played it absolutely perfect. I think that's about as good as Anthony Dillwick can throw it, and I don't think it's going to be good enough to run ups against this team with that much space to throw the football. Rutland in his fourth year out of Georgia Tech, second and 10, Green Bay. Dillwig has it intercepted. Picked off by Andre McMillan. He's back to the 27 yard line. A return of 20. McMillan with his second interception of the night, his third of the season. That time, Anthony Dillwig sets in the pocket. You see the receiver, top right of your screen, make the turn. Vikings do something a little bit different than they normally do. They play a softer zone, and uh, that's the kind of look you get when you throw an interception. That is the third Green Bay turnover of the half. Anderson. Tripped up as he got to the 35. Herschel Walker tried to throw him a block and ended up flat on his back. Audrey McMillan celebrating on the sideline. Scott Steven made the tackle. Having a chance to visit with uh, Herschel yesterday. There you see Dillwig trying to figure out why. Having a chance uh, to visit with Herschel yesterday. I asked him about running the ball, catching the ball, and blocking. He said the one thing he's worked on, it feels like he's pretty good at, is blocking. All right, we've reached the two-minute warning. It's 3 nothing Vikings. We'll be back in a moment. I don't understand why everyone makes such a fuss about those bathing suit shots I do for Sports Illustrated. Personally, I think some of those guys in the NFL would make a better choice. After all, I don't have the moves of a Barry Sanders, the grace of a Jerry Rice, or the physique of a Howie Long. But then again, who would look better in this shirt, John Elway? Or me. Kathy Ireland, not your everyday fan. For Team NFL merchandise, for your catalog, call 1-800-USA for NFL. On the other hand, I've never seen no way in a bathing suit. They're at your Christmas store. <laughs> Sears. Name brand electronics like this LXI Tulip camcorder outfit with telephoto lens. Just $799.99. Only at Sears Brand Central. For Christmas. If you're serious about whole grain, remember, Wheaties has it. These guys don't. Better get your whole grain. Better eat your Wheaties. A continuous commitment to improvement. One reason why the U.S. government awarded Cadillac the 1990 Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award, as demonstrated by the new 200 horsepower 4.9 liter V8 and electronically controlled transmission that not only generate more power, but deliver the highest highway mileage of any V8 powered luxury car. Another reason why the only way to travel is Cadillac style.
Coming up at halftime, Chris will be along with all the highlights from the day and Tom Jackson on the Dolphins' Bills race in the AFC East. Then we'll be back to Minneapolis and Joe will have the analysis of the first half. 3-0. We were talking about uh, Herschel Walker's blocking. Look at this last play. We can take a look at it after this play, give you an idea of how he's blocking. Second and eight. Gannon to Walker in the flat. Dumped, he dives for the six, got down to about the 18-yard line. Chuck Cecil took him down. Let's go back two plays and what we were talking about, Herschel blocking. Left part of your screen, you know, tackles talk about pancake blocks. You see the Herschel lower left, that's a doink block. I mean, Not for Steven, it wasn't. Well, it was a pancake for Steven <laughs> and a doink for the offense for Herschel that time. So, uh, Like we said earlier, he doesn't get a million dollars a year to go out and block linebackers. Ah, but he's trying. I like yes, that. he is. I mean, he's trying. Third and a yard. Anderson. Little stutter step got him down to the 16-yard line and a first down. And Minnesota will call timeout to stop the clock with a minute 17 to go first half. I think the Packers right now have got to do something special on defense. They've got to get some more people at the line of scrimmage, and they're going to have to line them up and stuff them. They're going to have to force Rich Gannon to throw the football to beat them. That was their game plan, but so far they haven't done it. Well, that time, again, they're in the split back set, and they will very rarely give the ball to Walker in that split back set. Most of the time, Alfred Anderson has got the carry. They'll throw the Walker out of that. Yeah, but still, the guys up front are doing a great job. There's Randall McDaniel just firing out. He said he loves this kind of game. It's that the offensive line right now is just running straight ahead and blocking people. In the beginning of the year, they did a little more traffic than they had before. Now they feel a lot more comfortable with just a straight-ahead, fire-out type block. Good block by Tim Irwin on that last play, too. First and 10, Vikings with a minute 17 to go, second quarter. Gannon, Chase. Dives forward to about the 13-yard line. And another timeout, the Vikings will stop the clock. They'll have one left. Minute seven to go. Our NFL coverage will start every Sunday, of course, and this coming Sunday, no exception, noon Eastern game day, then at seven o'clock. Back with all the highlights and results and the implications of the day on NFL prime time. And at eight o'clock, Joe and I will be in sunny Miami with the Dolphins against the Eagles and what's shaping up as an outstanding matchup of quarterbacks, Randall Cunningham and Dan Marino. Did you see the play that Cunningham made today, avoiding the sack in the end zone and ending up with a 95-yard touchdown pass? He is special. He really is. I mean, and he what he's done is, as the Eagles have gone on and won, what, five straight uh, until today, six straight, that... He has been the reason why. You're right, he's very special. At once, I thought he was just the best athlete at the quarterback mm -hmm. position. Now he's proving that he is a complete quarterback. Just done a great job for Buddy Ryan at ball club. Second and seven. Again, one to throw on the flat, nobody there. Got Jordan wide open. Can't get it to him and runs out of bounds. Chased out by Scott Steven. Boy, Steve Jordan, his tight end was wide open. He made his mind up. I, you know, it's, it's if you think at all on a football field, you're in trouble. You just have to be instinctive. He instinctively made his mind up because the play before, he ran. Now he scrambles again. Jordan doing a good job protecting, doing a good job. Now he releases out in the flat. He says, hey, up. Now Gannon had made the decision to run, and there was nothing he could do. And Rich Gannon knows. Right here, he turns back. Right there, he could have thrown the ball, but it was too late. Third and eight. Gannon on a little half roll. And throws and tried to make sure that it was not going to be intercepted. Threw it low, intended for Leo Lewis. And they'll have to go for the field goal. Good coverage by Ron Pitts, number 28, the fifth-year man out of UCLA. And the fans are booing. 
But the thing is, is that you're right, Mike. He didn't make the mistake. He didn't put the ball in a place where it might get batted up in the air. And that's what he had done the first four games he played. Quad Reves trying to make it two for two tonight. This will be officially a 31-yard attempt. Now they're saying it will officially be 32. With 55 seconds left. And Reves connects again. So Quad Reves may have found a home in Minnesota. He is six for seven since joining the team. And the Vikings have taken a six-nothing lead over Green Bay. This game, of course, with major wild card implications. And here are the standings. Philadelphia and Washington now tied seven and five. Green Bay could join that group with a win tonight. If they lose, of course, they'll be tied with Minnesota at six and six. Both of them would really be alive because this year we have the three wild card teams and Dallas sneaking back into the picture, six and seven. What a job by the Cowboys to turn that around. They come back today to win it. Of course, uh, Thanksgiving Day, uh, really handled the Redskins. Redskins woke up, played a great game. They're tough at RFK. I mean, uh, the uh, Dolphins found that out. Of course, the Bears go in there next week. Them coming off of a tough game over time against the Detroit Lions. You meant the Lions have lost to the Redskins and the Bears in overtime in games when they had chances to win the ball. What did they ever really feel for Wayne Bunce? I mean, he is, he's done everything but win. Yeah, but you know something? At this level, that's the only thing anybody ever <laughs> looks at. Right. You get a pat on the back on the way out if you don't win. Sometimes not even that. Where the pat's a little lower. Wilson waiting at the two-yard line. Reves will kick off. The Vikings were unhappy with their kickoff coverage until a week ago, and Reves has done a good job getting it downfield. Thompson, one of the up men, takes it. Does a nice job to get it back to the 42-yard line. And with 43 seconds to go in the half, the Packers will have good field position. That was a swift kick to prevent the big return, but as it is, they get it out at the 42. Well, what the what the Packers did is they put some good people up front in case it was a swift kick. Good coaching by the Packers side and a nice return. There's a look at the QBs. Neither of them tearing it up. Of course, Dillwig's got all the yardage. He's actually been on the field more. But the big number is that last one on the right, the two INTs. And Dillwick came into this game with seven touchdowns and only two interceptions. Four-man rush, Goldman knocked him down from behind. There is a flag down on the play at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Dolman came from the blind side. And it will be a hold against Green Bay. Ken Rutgers, number 75, the offensive left tackle. Coming off a of two knee operation. Got a handful handling uh, Dolman. Holding 75 offense. It's declined. Second down. There's Dolman, left part of your screen. Rutgers sets on him. Gets back, just can't quite back. Dolman manages to get the step on the corner. There's the grabbing of the jersey. And what happened on that play is that was actually a lateral. That's why they refused the penalty and the ball is spotted back with that many yards to go. And they're calling it a sack because the scoreboard's his second and 19. And the down markers all had second down. Fontenot, Shouldn't be a sack. No. The ball, the ball was thrown at a lateral and it went out of bounds. That's why it's marked where it was. And the Packers, or excuse me, the Vikings will use a timeout with 27 seconds to go. That was their last one. Think about Rutgers having arthroscopic surgery on both knees. You can't limp. No, you can't limp. Now here's, and here he is trying to block Dolman. Now there's Dolman. Now he knocks the ball. He hits Dillwig's arm. 
But as Doig threw the ball, it did not go forward. That ball was a lateral, went out of bounds, nine yards deep. Watch this. See, that ball goes out to the side. Watch where it lands. There it is. There's a duck floating through your television screen up to the left, but it does go back. Good job by the official on the side to rule it a lateral. And that's exactly what the ruling is. Or a backward pass, whatever you want to call it. That's Keith Euchre, number 70. We talked about the uh, surgery on Rutgers. This guy has had 10 operations on his left knee, more on his right, inflammation around his heart. He has had neck and spinal surgery. I mean, he makes Dan Hampton look healthy. <laughs> In his seventh year out of Auburn. 27 seconds to go third and 17. Delight of Fontenot. Used the official, ducked up to the 48-yard line. Brought down by Fullington. Clock running. And the Vikings, without a timeout, can't stop it here. And force them to kick it away, so the Packers will just go to the locker room. That's the end of the first half here at the Metrodome. It's been a battle of kickers. Vikings six, Packers nothing. We'll be back with more later, but right now, let's join Chris Berman. All right, Mike and Joe, thank you very much. So a low-scoring game here. That was not the case earlier today in Buffalo. Sure, that Monday nighter in Candlestick, I'll be covering it for us here on ESPN between the Niners and Giants. will be great, but they'll have to go some to top Philly in Buffalo. And this play, the play of the year. Bruce Smith doesn't sack Randall Cunningham. Running the wrong way in his own end zone. Across his body. 60 yards. Are you kidding? It's Fred Barnett. He could go all the way. 95 yards. Randall's 100th career touchdown pass in the NFL. But on this play, earlier in the game, Jim Kelly threw his Ceno to the venerable James Lofton. Like Isaac Curtis, Wesley Walker, Cliff Branch. He's still fast. Fast win for Buffalo, 30-23. to While the Bills won of the AFC East, the Dolphins had their hands full with Ernest Finer and the Redskins. 32 carries, 157 yards, three touchdowns, including the St. Carter. The Redskins pound the pound machine, 42 to 20. They met two weeks ago. There's Fred Edelstein at the game. Bengals and the Steelers. And the Bengal fans saw Gary Anderson at a field goal. Second fastest man at 200 field goals, only Stenner and better. But James Brooks, 81 yards, and the Bengals beat the Steelers for the second time in three weeks. 16 12. Stopping are in first place in the Central. That's because Warren Moon and the Oilers in overtime at Seattle. Boom. To Bernard Ford. Third move. Dave Wyman recovers it for Seattle. And for the third time in the last four weeks, Seattle wins on the final play of the game. Norm Johnson, good. 13 10 to Seahawks. Chiefs at the Patriots, who should have bagged the season a long time ago. They bagged this game on the first play of scrimmage. Steve DeBerg to Stephon Page. The only one in focus was Page. Why? Get the pole out of the way, too. Kansas City beat New England 37 7. Trying to stay pace with the Chiefs for the Raiders. Very cold Denver. Full. Big. Bang. Boom! He's gone! Bo knows! Fantastic touchdown! 62 yards, the Raiders win at Denver 23-20 to sweep the Broncos. Bobby Beathard trying to focus in. You don't need binoculars to focus in on Marion Watts. 159 yards and a pair of touchdowns for the Chargers against the Jets. Billy Joe Tolliver. Gun one and eight Lewis. Chargers roll 38-17. Colts at the card. Dexter Manley checking out the Phoenix defense. Came up with a big play. Colts led early. Jeff George picked off. Fight Cedric Mack. Watch Mack. Run left. Then, thinking about the end zone. Whoa! He laterals it to Marcus Turner. He scampers him with the game when he scores. The card. Jack Indianapolis 20 to 17. Steve Walsh back at Dallas as a member of the New Orleans Saints. He says, why not let Ironhead block? Why not let Ruben Mays carry it? 15 yards. Saints lead 10 nothing at the half. Second half. Troy Aikman with 11 straight passes. This one for the touchdown to Daryl Johnson. 17 13. The Cowboys. Art Modell. Can't bear to watch the Browns this year. Couldn't bear to watch the Rams on fourth and goal. And Jim Everett, play fake, beat Holohan, touchdown Everett, four TDs, Rams, shake, rattle, and roll, 38 to 23. What time is it? What time is it? Well, if it's Atlanta on the road, it's time for the Falcons to lose. They were leading Tampa Bay, but Vinny hits Mark Terry. 35 yards, 23-17, Tampa Bay win, the Fox have lost 17-3. Beautiful day in Chicago, and it was a great overtime game between the Lions and the Bears. Jim Harbaugh, tied at 17, 
little more than four minutes to go in the OT. It's Neil Anderson, 50 yards, touchdown. The Bears win 23 to 17, and it's wins like that by the Chicago Bears that keep teams like the Packers and the Vikings, no matter how hot they are, trailing in the NFC Central. The Bears with the win clinch at least a wild card. We're at halftime of our ball game. When we come back, Tom Jackson will join me. The Vikings six, the Packers nothing. Not going out for war. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Introducing the all-new Edsel. Described as a car sucking a lemon, the greatest blunder in automotive history cost $250 million to launch, but the public simply didn't buy it. Believe it or not, Stephen Vincel Honda has over 391s in stock. 91 four-door Accords with air start at only $12,499. 91 four-door Civic start at $85.99 only at Stephen Vincel Honda. Believe it or not. When you want more than just a deal on your next car, your only choice is more Cadillac Pontiac in Ellisville. And more Pontiac, our goal is number one in sales and number one in customer satisfaction. One. And here's why. Right now, 1991 Grand Ams are on sale with prices starting from $84.97 delivered or $190.25 per month with no money down. But you must hurry. This is a limited time offer from West County's hottest dealer. That's more Cadillac Pontiac in Ellisville, where you get more than just a deal because nobody beats more prices. ESPN brings you coast to coast NCAA basketball. The action's outstanding. Everywhere you look, there's down to the wire excitement. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Awesome, baby! Sensational! Super! Two of the country's top conferences battle head to head in the ACC Big East Challenge. Complete coverage starts Monday at 7 Eastern, live on ESPN. Back at halftime of our game with the Vikings leading the Packers 6-0. Uh, Tom Jackson joins me now. And, uh, Tommy, we were talking on primetime. A big test for the two co-leaders going into the day of the AFC East, the Bills uh, and the Miami Dolphins. The Bills were at home. Let's take a look at some of the action against the Philadelphia Eagles, some of the action you didn't see in the halftime highlights. And one thing the Bills do is pressure the pass. And, and mostly in the form of Bruce Smith, who, who today tied the NFL lead for sacks with 15. Here he comes inside. Uh, Heller tries to block Tally outside and uh, end up getting a sack on Cunningham from behind. You know what else they have, Tommy? Scoring capability. We saw the pass the loft. This is Andre Reid, who turns a simple uh, pattern into a touchdown. Well, and I think it speaks for the poise that Jim Kelly has shown in the pocket. You know, you've spoken of it. This guy has matured in the pocket, and I think what really has made him the quarterback that he is this year is he spots the blitz, spots the coverage, and is able to go to that second, third receiver, get the ball to him quickly, enable him to run with it. You know, one thing that people have missed about the Buffalo Bills, they're not the, the Marv Levy offensive, uh, Tim Marchand Brown offensive a couple of years ago, will run Thurman Thomas and maybe will pass a little bit. I mean, they have McKellar, a better receiving tight end there. They have the venerable Lofton. They have uh, Andre Reid. They're a big play offense, and if people aren't paying attention, they have scored more points than anybody in the NFL. They are going to be tough if they stay at home for the playoffs, Buffalo in January, especially with D coming on. And the thing that's most impressive to me, I think when we talk about Super Bowl and who's going to be there, this is a team that plays like an NFC team. You know, Philadelphia kind of pushed the New York Giants around last week. They could not do the same thing to the Bills this week. You talk about pushing around. The Dolphins going in uh, at 9-2 and two, went into Washington today. And what happened up at RFK? Well, the Dolphins... They got pushed around, for example, by the Hogs and Ernest Biner today. Now here you see a short game by Biner, but you see the surge of that front line. And then the, the famous Washington counter trade. They pull the guard and the tackle. Biner slips in behind him, gets a seven, eight-yard gain. This was the way the day went for the Dolphins. Miami also had big-time problems running the football. Sammy Smith and company ran for only 34 yards today, not against the bigger skins. Well, it's very interesting. They've lost to the Giants. They've lost to the Skins and the Raiders. Against those three ball clubs, they've only been able to gain 87 yards rushing the football total, 29 yards a game. That will not get it done. They're good against teams that are, are more uh, uh, less physical 
than some of those big NFC opponents, some of those big AFC opponents. But when it gets down to crunch time, they really haven't proven that they can uh, control the ball on the ground. Although at 9-3, and three, I don't think they owe anybody any apologies. That division is going to come down to Week 16 when uh, the Dolphins go up to Buffalo. It's usually they play that game in Florida late <laughs> in December, but this one will be up uh, in Buffalo. And whoever wins the division may be home throughout the playoffs. And I repeat, if it's Buffalo, winning in January in Buffalo ain't going to be easy unless you're wearing the Bills color. Just a thought. We, of course, are at halftime of our game, and Minnesota leads Green Bay 6 to nothing. We'll go back up to Mike and Joe when we return in a moment. Recently, Acura introduced what many have called the greatest sports car the world has ever known. Our latest idea is somewhat bigger than you, Acura Legend. Our bug business has never been better. So one day we just looked at each other and knew it was time to go public. Your auditor gives us an accurate picture of your capital needs. When are we going to hear? It takes time. This is a special training course where Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts learn to deal with physical obstacles. Here, they learn self-confidence and reliance. I'm Brian Noble of the Green Bay Packers. And I got a very personal reason for working with these young people as a United Way volunteer. I was a Boy Scout myself, and I know the tough problems they face trying to grow up in a society where drug and alcohol abuse are commonplace. Through scouting and programs like this, which are made possible by your contributions to the United Way, these kids are making the right choices. Staying in school, saying no to all of the things that can rob them of their futures. This is my wife, Cindy and she was a Girl Scout. We both grew up in scouting, and these are my daughters, Taylor and Amanda. When you give to the United Way, you're joining all of the volunteers and organizations that make up the United Way, and you're saying you care. Because the United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. The airline that brings you 10 countries across Asia and the Pacific now bridges the Atlantic to Europe. Come fly the airline that spans more than half the world. United. Come fly the friendly skies. This portion of halftime is brought to you by Acura Automobile. Experience precision crafted performance. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Joe Theismann. We have a 6-0 halftime score. The Vikings with a pair of field goals over the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay's been able to move the ball tonight. They've had a couple of big pass plays to Sterling Sharp, but it's been the three turnovers that's really uh, done them in. It really has. It's inconsistency on offense. Anthony Dilwig, I don't believe, is taking advantage of uh, the, the three and five step drop, get rid of the football. Got to give a lot of credit to Minnesota's defense yeah. and the job they've done putting pressure on them. Of course, Lindy and Fonte's offense does have a lot of options in it. It's, uh, somebody said, a quarterback-friendly offense. Uh, let's get into that a little bit. It is a quarterback-friendly offense. What he does is he sets up specific different types of pass plays. For example, we, we've diagrammed one here for you called the X smash route. I and mean, you'll see the X receiver. The halfback runs a corner pattern or a flag route. Now on the next option, the X man takes just four simple steps off the ball, not runs, and reads the technique. Then what he does, he has the option of running all the way across the field. If it's man-to-man -man coverage, try and get the defensive guy behind you. Or he can come down a few steps and then head on back out after he sits in that area. And this is really what Mike meant by quarterback friendly, is it always gives you a place to go with the football on that side of the field. You don't want to have to go from left to right. You want to stay on one side of the field. I would think that the Pack's going to use that a lot more because of the pressure that the Vikings are putting on Dilwig.
and they have really been on Dillwig tonight. Three sacks, they've knocked him down five times, five other times they've been right in his face. The three turnovers, one his fumble, and two interceptions. And we're glad to be in the dome tonight. It was 31 degrees at game time. Now it's down to 18 and snowing. Five or six inches of snow coming our way tonight. Keeping track of Herschel Walker in the first half. Two carries, 11 yards. Both of those out of the eye. And I think the Vikings have made a little bit of a, of a technical error in using Herschel as somewhat of a decoy on the run. I think they felt like the pack was going to try and key on him. My idea is stop me first, then I'll go someplace else. It's an expensive decoy. Kickoff very short taken by Anderson, and Anderson hit immediately and knocked down by Bland. Excellent coverage on special teams. Took him down at the 22-yard line. Maybe not trying to kick the ball to Herschel Walker. Halftime stats. Numbers not very impressive for anybody, but the biggest number on that board, really, the three turnovers for the Green Bay Packers. Packers defense has done the job. They've managed to contain Herschel and Anthony Carter and, of course, uh, Rich Gannon running around back there. But still, you just can't give the ball up. Vikings start from their own 22. Split back set. No, excuse me, it's the eye with Anderson offset. Here's where they like to run Walker and do. Hits the hole across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Johnny Holland makes the tackle out of Texas A&M. Individual stats for the Vikings. You see Anderson with 34 yards. Gannon has run three times and receiving. Walker's caught a couple, so is Anderson. And four tackles and a sack for Henry Thomas on the Vikings defense. Second and six, Minnesota. Team trying to win its fifth straight game after digging a huge hole at one and six. Walker on the toss. Again, that was out of the split back set and no game. Well, it wasn't really a split back, Mike. That time he was in the full back position with the back. It looks like a split back from where we are. But basically, they're going to try and keep Herschel somewhere in the proximity behind the quarterback. You're right, though. It wasn't the eye, and that's his strong no, suit. No, and he wasn't seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. You're and I think that helps eye back so much. Well, I think, it, let's face it, that's what Herschel does best. I mean, he does, obviously doesn't have the build of, of this guy to, to <laughs> run people over. Um, so, uh, but I, I still think that you got to do what they're doing now. Make them stop Herschel first. Third and six. Four-man rush. Gannon throws complete to Carter. He belted out of bounds by Leroy Butler, but it's a gain of 14 and a first down. Nice read by Rich Gannon. He had the three receivers to his right. Anthony Carter was singled up one-on-one. -on -one. He found and read the one-on-one -on -one coverage, made a nice throw, and got the ball to him. Carter, when you talk about him, you put him uh, in the same class with Rice and Sterling Sharp. Leroy Butler trying to cover him. See, he just had Leroy Butler turn completely around. Really smooth. Nice little tippy-toe. Keep the feet in. His best game this year came in the first meeting against Green Bay when he caught nine. Gannon with good protection throws behind his tight end, Steve Jordan. Steve Jordan trying so hard to try and get himself in a position where he can get open. There you see him just hook in the middle. See, look, here, 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 over. No, not over there. <laughs> see what he wants to say is settle down. Jordan kept sliding a little bit, and, and I'll tell you something, from a quarterback standpoint, it is tough when a guy bounces just a little. Second and 10. Walker. Forget it. Wrapped up by Sean Patterson. The Packers said if they can get Herschel to run east and west instead of north and south, they can stop him in the backfield, and they've done it. They want to keep him on his side of the line of scrimmage. This one coming at lower right side. See what I mean by east and west? He starts up a few steps and then has to head for the sidelines. 
That is not Herschel Walker's strong suit. He is not a runner who can start that way and cut up. He needs a little bit of room, a little bit of space to get himself running. He's actually what we would call a space runner. Third and 13. You give him a seam, he's gone. Five carries, 12 yards tonight for Herschel Walker. Four-man rush and pressure. Gannon on the run, got it to Workman. Excuse me, Anderson to the 46-yard line. That's going to be shy of a first down, and they'll have to punt away. You've got to use your head in a game like this, and that's what Rich Gannon is doing. You got the lead. You, you know, you got a lot of yards to pick up. All you want to do, move the ball up where the punter can get the offensive team of the Packers back deep. Let your defense go out and do what they've been doing. Packers did a nice job that time with a lot of pressure on only a four-man rush. Newsom to punt. Query waits inside his 15. And it's blocked. Newsom bobbled the snap. It's picked up by Tiger Green. Touchdown. Couldn't handle the low snap, and Tiger Green came from the outside. Picked up the football and went in from 36 yards out. The last time Newsom had a punt block, it was against Green Bay two years ago by Tim Harris. And all at once, a mistake. A turnover, the thing that killed the Packers in the first half, has hurt the Vikings. One simple muff of the ball gives a guy a chance. Here it is. Over there. Right over there. He's just going to come around by the bobble. Gives him enough time. Watch Tiger come around the corner. Just gets a bump. That ball should have been gone. He, not, he just absolutely smothered it. Chris Jackie for the lead. And the Packers are back. 7-6 on top of the Vikings. We'll be back to the Metrodome in a moment. We've placed these two similar 4x4s in this swamp to see if there's any real difference. Sure, they both have lots of luggage space, plenty of room for five. I don't think the Gators haven't noticed, but only the Isuzu Trooper has auto-locking hubs, so you don't have to get out to get in to four-wheel drive. So, combined with its very low price, we see that only the Trooper won't cost you an arm and a leg. The Isuzu Trooper at just $13,699. There's no comparison. Travel along this road after a rain, and you'll not only see the green, you'll smell it. Legend says take it in just once, and that fresh, clean feeling will last the rest of your journey. There's a bit of this in every bar of Irish Spring. Ah, the last and fresh scent of Irish Spring deodorant soap. The Irish never quit. And Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Isuzu. For features, styling, and price, there's no comparison. And by Irish Spring Deodorant Soap. The Irish never quit. That's the capital of the state of Minnesota in St. Paul, modeled after the nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Kicking off from the 30-yard line after a five-yard penalty. This is Herschel Walker. And Walker's out to the 26th, the leading kick returner in the NFC. Coaches like to have their punters get the ball off. You'll see it. Right part of your screen, upper right part of your screen. You like to get the kickoff right around two seconds. There's the two seconds. That ball should have been gone. Now here comes Tiger from the right side at 2-5, knocking it back into his stomach. 
Heck, he just still has the ball. He just took it off his foot and kept on going. Second block of his NFL career. He blocked seven in college. So Gannon starts from the 20 foot Walker in the eye behind Anderson. Play action. Carter. Dumped and dumped hard by Lee. But AC hangs on. What a nice catch that was. Now, he did not come down with his feet inbounds, but the onus he would have, his momentum would have allowed him to come down. Watch, you'll see the left part of your screen. He goes up for the catch. You'll see he's up in the air, never gets his feet on the ground, there, but he would have, and that's the way they rule it. He would have been able to come down. Lee did his best, but couldn't prevent the completion. Ball spotted at the 42. Walker takes a shot as he crosses the 45 to the 46 yard line. That changes your entire mental approach now as an offensive coordinator, as the quarterback. Now you're no longer ahead. You've protected a lead. You know, you, you think that the pack is going to be backed up. You're going to get field position. Now all of a sudden you're back on the field and you're down by a point. Herschel Walker has been under so much pressure since that trade. They give up so much in bodies and draft choices. In no way he can come in here and satisfy people. But he has not lived up to his own expectations as a member of the Vikings either. Walker behind Anderson. Got him going sideways, and he dives from midfield. I'll tell you, though, Mike, in all defense, early on, the biggest problem with Herschel Walker's trade last year was his first game. He went out yeah. and tore the place up, and everybody had these great expectations. Herschel wasn't given a chance to be a part of the offense early, so therefore, he was criticized, but he never had a chance to show anything. So I don't believe that you can criticize somebody when they're not out on the field. And that debut was against Green Bay, had 148 yards, and everybody thought he was going to get 148 yards every game. Nobody does that. Third and three, Gannon goes to the shotgun. Right on the delay. It'll be close, depending on the spot. Mark Murphy came up from the strong safety spot to get in on the tackle along with Burnell Dent. I think he made it. Here it is, going to come at you, lower left side. The shotgun limits the quarterback in the running game a little bit, but not when it comes to sweeps, and they're good plays against pass defenses. See him put his head down. Managed, managed to get the ball out, and then, of course, it's just up to the official. And I believe he makes it right on the football. He's going to have it right in the middle of the ball. Yep. Well, the eyes haven't failed yet, have they? Put that baby right down the middle, he did. See, you hear that Viking horn? Remember, Tim Harris said when he comes up here, his goal is to make sure that that horn doesn't flow. He hates that. And that, too, he doesn't like it. Harris is great. He tries to talk to get other people out of their games. A lot of time it works. Tremendous athlete. Play action to Walker. They've done that an awful lot tonight. Now Gannon in trouble. Scrambled out of it. Nice job by Gannon. Took a shot from Johnny Holland. Good job by the Packers secondary, too. That was a play-action pass. They tried to drag Jordan underneath, get him involved in the offense a little bit. Linebackers got back, reacted very well. Ball spotted at the Packer 43 with eight minutes and six seconds to go third quarter. Green Bay on a punt block has taken a 7-6 lead on the Vikings. Green Bay has won four of five. Minnesota four straight. Both teams left for dead in the combat. Walker. Tim Harris and Noble make the tackle at the 40. Well, there's Mike Lynn with the glasses looking at his uh, prize project. Of course, Mike Lynn at, at the end of this year will um, not no longer be general manager, although, although he will be a member of the board of the Vikings and a voting trustee. So he'll still have say. Going to go over and as he is now run the world league 
interesting too in the world football league the instant replay is not going to be there and it's not going to be there from what i understand for the purpose of speeding up the game third and two here for the vikings at the packers 39. right diving forward had to get near the 37. mark murphy made the stop Scratch your head a little bit and say, on third and short, what is Herschel Walker doing on the sideline? G Jerry Burns has decided that he wanted to platoon his backs to get everybody involved so the morale would stay up. So he puts Walker and Alfred Anderson together. He likes to play DJ Dozier with Cedric Smith, and he likes Alan Rice to be his third down back. All five of them contribute. To go back to Mike Lynn for a moment as they uh, check the measurement. Of course, Lynn said uh, during the time that they were making the trade that he thought there was one missing piece that they have the first down, one missing piece to go to the Super Bowl, and that was a dominant back like Herschel Walker, and he goes out and makes the trade. So Lynn put an awful lot of the pressure on Herschel Walker because he stenciled Super Bowl on his chest when he came in here. I, I mean, there's no question. You can't, you can't blame Herschel Walker. He wasn't running well by his own admission. But certainly no one football player is ever going to live up to that kind of a deal. And the great thing about Herschel, he is definitely his own man. First and ten, Walker goes to the eye. And movement in the offensive line. Number 65, left tackle Gary Zimmerman got a little, little antsy, tried to get off the ball. Ball start, 65 offense. Of course, the one thing that Trey did, if you win the Super Bowl, that's fine. Everybody applauds and says it was worth it. But you don't win the Super Bowl, and you give up these draft choices. No first or second in this in 1990. No first or second in 91. No first or second in 1992. And that is not a way to keep a team at the top of the league standing. Yeah, but if your team is not a bad ball club and win a lot, they're not going to have a lot of high picks anyway. First and 15. Gannon, good throw. Walker trying to get to the sticks, and it looked like he made it at the 28-yard line. Fine effort by Walker that time with three tacklers on him, a gain of 15. That's how you try and get the ball to Herschel Walker. Screens, split him out, let him utilize his speed, scare somebody. <coughs> Excuse me scare somebody sorry and he is a good receiver left part of your screen Gannon moves back steps up in the pocket and just fires it out to the sideline where Herschel's just hanging out ah does a good job of look at it. all those shots and that ball is still tucked real tight to his body took four guys he had fumbled four times and lost them all earlier in the year which is also a concern and it is the first down good drive by the Vikings here Anderson Touchback. Nice job by Alfred Anderson. Gets to the 19-yard line. Brought down again by Mark Murphy. Excellent block by Tim Irwin, the right tackle. And, and by Herschel Walker. You know, we talked about his, uh, what was that little, little bump block before? Watch this. He comes in in motion. Look at that. Huh? That is a pancake. Yes, a pancake. He got him down. He counts. It is a pancake. Now he's got a bumpy block and a pancake block. One for one. Under approaching four and a half in the second, third quarter, 7-6, Green Bay. And movement again along the line. And this one will go against the Vikings. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann with you from Minnesota. Both of these clubs trying to stay alive in the wild card race. Ball start, 64 offense. Second down. Second penalty of the night called on Randall McDaniel. And the Vikings really believe they are set at guard for years to come with McDaniel and Kalis, both out of Arizona State, both drafted in 1988. McDaniel a first round, Kalis a uh, fourth. And then you put them in there with Zimmerman, Irwin, and Loudermilk. You've got a good line. Second and six, Anderson. Diving across the 20 to about the 19-yard line. They need to make the 17 for the first down. Tim Harris in on the tackle again. Nice mixture of plays by uh, Tom Moore and his staff. 
spread Herschel out, move him around, keep him in the eye, give the ball to Alfred Anderson. Gannon making some good plays, that athletic ability of his. When he came out of school, everybody wanted him to be anything but a quarterback. Wanted to be a defensive back, running back, but he said, hey, look, I'm going from place where I can play quarterback. That's why he did not stay with the New England Patriots. Third and two. Herschel. Fourth down. Robert Brown, the first man to get there, number 93 out of Virginia Tech. That guy has played in every game for the Green Bay Packers since he got here in 82. That's Tim Harris on the ground. Looks like he might He's grabbing his knee. Oh, he also has a cramp from the looks of the two. Boy, sure don't want to see that. 3.16 to go in the third quarter. We'll check on Tim Harris when we come back. Ripley's Believe It or Not. Introducing the all-new Edsel. Described as a car sucking a lemon, the greatest blunder in automotive history cost $250 million to launch, but the public simply didn't buy it. Believe it or not, Stephen Vincel Honda has over 391s in stock. 91 four-door Accords with air started only $12,499. 91 four-door Civic started $85.99 only at Stephen Vincel Honda. Believe it or not. It's the winner in paradise. Missouri Lottery wants to send you to Hawaii. All you have to do is send any losing Missouri Lottery ticket or fax somebody along with your name, address, and phone number and watch a Sunday night NFL game on ESPN. We'll draw five lucky winners each week. These weekly winners will win free sports apparel and register to win the grand prize. A trip for two to Hawaii to see the Pro Bowl in February. Just mail your entry in any losing Missouri Lottery ticket or fax somebody to this address and watch NFL on ESPN each week to see if you have won. One lucky winner will send winner in paradise when we draw the winner on December 23rd. Family Channel's hits are hot. Rin Tin Tin, K9 Cop, wholesome spine tingling adventure. Maniac Mansion, wonderfully innovative and imaginative, unlike anything you've ever seen. Border Town, well written and well acted. Big Brother Jake, a half yes. hour haven of safe, clean humor. Zorro, the Family Channel's revival is terrific. The shows we make for you are making it. So make these hits yours every day here on the Family Channel. Tim Harris being worked on by the Packer training staff, uh, able to walk off the field under his own power with uh, not a no noticeable limp. And here's what happened. See his watch his left foot. Now his right one gets tied up a little, and he just gets bent around. Hopefully not very seriously injured. Quad Reves will try from 41 yards. He is two for two tonight. Make it three for three. And the Vikings have regained the lead over the Green Bay Packers at home. It's 9-7 Minnesota. They're at your Christmas store. Sears. Top brand electronics like this Laser Slimline XT computer with 640K memory and two disk drives. Only $15 per month. Only at Sears Brand Central. For Christmas. Premium choice. What do we have here? Acute lower abdominal pain. I haven't seen any alternative. I don't either. We have to go in. Have we gotten the parents yet? I have them on the phone, Doctor. They're out of the country. Fax them consent form. Stat. That's the only thing we're waiting on. No, no, no. Okay. He's got it. Any Doctor, I've got the parents' signatures. Excellent. Here we go. Dex Facsimile, one of a wide range of business communication solutions from Fujitsu, the global computer and communications company. You begin with raw steel. Shape it with fire, muscle, and sweat. Polish it to razor sharp perfection. We're looking for a few good men with a medal to be Marines. The year was 1961. JFK was in year one. Roger Maris hit 61. Elvis was on top of the charts. And America was getting ready to twist again like they did last summer. 
The NFL unveiled a new franchise, the Minnesota Vikings, led by coach Dorm Van Brocklin and a rookie quarterback named Fran Tarkington. The Vikings shocked the league by trouncing Chicago 37-13 in the season opener. Meanwhile, in Green Bay, the Lombardi era was beginning to take hold. The Pack shut out the Giants 37-0 to earn the legendary coach his first NFL title. And Jerry Burns now seeing his club going back on top. 9-7 to with 2.57 to go in the third quarter. Vince Workman takes the short kick. Tries to go to the far side all the way across the field. And can't make it. A flag is down as he's tackled at the 16. Merriweather was down there on special teams. And we'll check out the penalty. That is a ripe play for an illegal block or a clip when you go all the way across the field. This, incidentally, with 2.45 to go in the third quarter, will be the first offensive play the Packers have had in the second half. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the uh, in this quarter... Illegal block, number 23 on the return. First down. The Vikings are probably leading in time of possession. What do you think? It's a real short limb you went out on. Ah, that's right. And they'll back it up to the eight-yard line. So even though Green Bay took the lead in this half, they did it on the defensive play with Tiger Green, who was just called for that penalty, blocked the punt and ran it back for a touchdown. Had it. Kyle drives his way across the 10-yard line. Merriweather on the stop along with Al Noga and the crowd senses an opportunity here. It really, and it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity, I think, for the Packers to try and get the ball to Sterling Sharp. When you're backed up, you put so much pressure on the defense to defend over nine, close to 90 yards. If you can buy yourself a little time, you can get Sterling Sharp open. There's the time of possession, obviously dominated by Minnesota. Second and seven. Got back to the line of scrimmage. A little pushing and shoving as the Vikings are really fired up on defense. Nice job by Al Noga and Ken Clark coming in from the left side. They got a great jump off the ball, got penetration into the Packer backfield, and just absolutely stuffed the run. Give Haddocks a loss of a yard on the last play, bring up third and eight. Henry Thomas making sure that the spot the ball in the right place. Don't give him any more than they deserve. Green Bay only two out of six on third down tonight. Third and eight. Should have been intercepted. Should have been a touchdown. McMillan would have had his third of the night. He doesn't believe it, neither do his teammates. That one was a little too easy. I mean, I don't even believe he expected it. I don't think Dilwick sees him. This is the second time he's thrown right in that area. I mean, he absolutely does not see McMillan. His focus is just on the wide receiver. He has no idea that that defensive guy is just hanging there. Don Bracken to punt to Leo Lewis. Good kick by Bracken under pressure. Lewis, fair catch at his own 44-yard line. When he needed it, Bracken got off a 46-yard kick with no return. We have a minute three to go third quarter. 9-7, Minnesota. Hi, I'm Frank Lita with 500 cash that says I've got the lowest Honda prices in town. It won't cost you a dime to find out. Shop around and then see Frank Lita Honda. We'll prove it. Our selection's as good as our prices. The best in town. And we're the easiest to get to. Minutes from anywhere on St. Charles Rock Road between Lindbergh and 270. The best price, selection, location. It's why you just can't beat a Frank Lita deal. Right, gang? Right, Grandpa! If you're as old as this car, have we got a deal for you. 
You see, when you insure your car with shelter insurance, you may qualify for preferred rates for those 48 and over. With the Platinum Shield, you'll get the same personal service you've come to expect. Men, if you want quality brand name footwear at affordable prices without the hassle of shopping, you want Supermarket of Shoes. This week, take an additional 20% off Supermarket of Shoes everyday low prices on the entire stock of men's Nike Air Athletics. Choose from a super selection of styles, all on sale. Aisles and dials of brand name styles at the Supermarket of Shoes. The Supermarket of Shoes. On the strength of three field goals, the Vikings lead the Packers by two with 103 to go. Tomorrow's headlines brought to you by Levi's 505, 506, and 540 jeans. The Bills beat the Eagles. Fine performance by Jim Kelly. Had a huge first half. The Bears clinch at least a wild card berth. The Redskins came alive at home. The Cowboys, third consecutive win. They're in the playoff picture. Pittsburgh without an offensive touchdown for the sixth time this season. And Bo at 117 yards for the Raiders. Herschel on the toss. Flea flicker to Gannon. Beautifully covered by Lee. vicinity of Anthony Carter and it's a touchdown. Carter with his eighth touchdown catch. It is being reviewed by instant replay to see if the ball hit the ground. Mark Lee never bit on the flea flicker for one second. He had brilliant coverage. But what a play by Carter. Ball goes right back to Hurst and now Gannon just fires this thing up. This is just having confidence in somebody. Mark Lee is going to make a play on it right here, but Carter, the ball, never hits the ground. It hits his hand. What a sensational catch. That's a touchdown, folks. And the, the team, the extra point team is standing on the field watching the replay, and they all applaud it. What a catch. Anthony Carter, unbelievable. He said he got off to a slow start this year because he wanted to After justify. After further review, the play stands. AC said he was trying to justify the big money contract he signed and put a lot of pressure on himself. That's why he got off to the slow start, but that's the kind of receiver he can be. He made a 56-yard touchdown pass out of nothing. He, and he's, he's, he's done it a lot this year. He, nothing's come easy for him this year. Reveys for the point after. Drills it. This is the old flea flicker. It's designed to fool the secondary and hopefully get somebody. They're going to give Herschel the ball back here. He's going to turn around. Gannon's going to get it back. Carter's going to go down, but Lee never absolutely fights at all. He's gone. He's gone with AC. There's the pitch. Now it goes back. Go ahead. AC's got to run to catch up to Mark Lee. He just puts his hands out. The ball gets batted around, and what a sensational grab. Unbelievable. What a catch. Almost had it once. Look at this. Memories of Lynn Swan against the Dallas Cowboys. Four catches, 96 yards, and a touchdown. And now the Vikings have a little breathing room, 16-7. Keep in mind, the Packers have not scored a point offensively. Their touchdown came on a blocked punt. They've run three offensive plays the entire fourth quarter. Jerry Burns just saying, are you kidding me? Look at that emotion. <laughs> Look at that emotion. 
unbelievable. He said it as well as anybody. Brilliant play by Anthony Carter. And now Green Bay is going to have to regroup with 54 seconds left in the third period. If they lose, both teams would be six and six. Kick goes two yards deep in the end zone, fielded by Herman Fontenot. They'll down it there. And Green Bay will have to start from its own 20. Hope you'll be with us next Sunday. Our NFL coverage starts with game day at noon Eastern time, a preview of all the action, then a recap of everything at 7 Eastern on prime time. And then we'll be in Miami for the Dolphins and the Eagles, 8 o'clock Eastern next Sunday night. A couple of teams almost certainly to be seen later in the playoffs. And we'll get to take a look at Cunningham and Marino and something we haven't seen in recent years, and that's a Miami defense. All the way to beating up pretty good today. Yeah, but they're playing real good football. Dan Marino's got a little bit of a running game to help him out. Actually, a very good running game to help him out a little bit now. Gut check time for the Packers. They got him, and it's Ken Clark, the 13-year veteran nose man, who made the sack. Ken Clark has really come into his own. Talking to Henry Thomas about Ken Clark, he said, you know, with Keith Ballard in there, Keith comes off the ball so quick, I'm always trying to catch up to him. With Ken Clark in there, we come off the same time, and we can work our games a little bit easier because we get off the ball the same time. That's the 47th sack against the Packers. That's the worst in the league. If the name Ken Clark sounds familiar, it's because he was a great player. Earlier in his career with the Eagles, he was their MVP in 1984. Second and 19. Joe Wig under pressure again, has to throw it low. Intended for Kemp over the middle, and he took a belt. Ken Clark and Dolman pressuring him again. Well, they are just, they just pin their ears back and go. Dolman coming in, Clark doing a great job as well at front four. The thing about it is the Vikings can put so much pressure on you with just four people. Very seldom does Floyd Peters rush, if he does, five, another linebacker. But he just turns those four guys loose up front, drops seven back in coverage, and makes your life miserable if you're a quarterback. Tough situation for the Packers here, third and 19. Pressure again, knocks it away. Noga in the end zone, what's the call? Touchdown! What do you think he's gonna say about that one? Unbelievable, probably. Al Noga gets his second touchdown of the year. Al Noga, top left part of your screen. Henry Thomas on the move with Ken Clark. Noga comes all the way around, swats the ball out of Dilwig's hand, then has the presence of mind to jump on it once, and then scoop it in for the touchdown. What great effort. Great effort by Al Noga. Look at that, just reaches around the blocker, Tony Mandrich manages to swat the ball out of Dilwig's hands and then finds it in the end zone. Well, this is being reviewed. Was Dilwig's arm coming forward or not? Uh, Boy, that's right. so close. I mean, it's back. And it actually, in truth, it looks like it is starting forward. See how it starts to come? Well, see... It's just starting to. How do you call that? Well, if it starts, the, the rule is very, very cut and dry. If the arm starts forward and he has the ball in his hand, then it's an incompleted forward pass. Well, it's all up to Al Sabato now, and he is calling down his decision to the field. It's a touchdown or an incomplete pass. I think he's got to let the play stand. Play official, the play stands. Fumble! Just beside himself, 
turnovers have killed the Packers. Got to be conclusive. In that case, you just couldn't quite tell whether the arm started mo moving forward before Al got his hand You're over. right, and in that case, it's the only call he can make. Reveille's for the point after. He's got it. And the Minnesota Vikings extend their lead. No go with the big play. Al Noga on the sidelines explaining to the guys, saying that's how he did it. Noga is only 248 pounds. He's just one of the quickest players in the game. Look at the right arm come out. All he does is swat the ball. He just swats it before Dillard really gets a chance to get the... We can see the hand coming forward, but you'll notice the ball did move, and I believe that's the way the officials ruled it. There's another look-see. That ball's gone before he throws it. Two touchdowns in a 51-second span. Make it 23-7 with three seconds to go in the quarter. Huge play by Al Noga out of Hawaii. And not bad pass protection by Mandarin, who's done a good job all night long. Just a great effort. Boy, that tells it all. Two interceptions, two fumbles. 18 interceptions on the year for the Vikings and a tough night for Anthony Dilwick, who has been under a lot of pressure. And the four turnovers have led to a touchdown and two field goals. Charles Wilson, the deep man, standing at the two. Rave blasts this one. Wilson from the one. Taken down at the 24-yard line. Darrell Fullington down on special teams for the Packers, and Wilson wanted a penalty on that. It looked like somebody got his face mask, but they're not going to make the call. At the end of the third quarter, the Vikings getting some breathing room over the pack. The Toyota versus the Isuzu standard pickup. If Earth were invaded by giant reptiles, which would be better prepared? Get out of here! Well, first of all, the Isuzu gets better mileage than Toyota. Mm, that's helpful. Plus, it has the biggest payload in its class, so it can carry more. All in all, when the giant lizards come, I'd rather be in an Isuzu. Because it even has more leg room. The Isuzu pickup. At just 7 7 79 there's no comparison. Life, take one. <laughs> I do. You only get one take in life. Take Sony Handycam, the world's smallest camcorders for life's biggest moments. We're ready to start the fourth quarter at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. 23 to 7 is our score. Minnesota over Green Bay, and it has been the Minnesota defense that has really done the job tonight. They have been all over Anthony Dillwig. They've gotten four turnovers. That's the story. I mean, you look at the stats. The stats, nobody likes to go by statistics. Green Bay minus six yards in the third quarter. Minnesota 140 yards. But the defense has just done an outstanding job for the Vikings. Constantly putting pressure on Anthony Dillard. Green Bay in a huge hole now. They start from their own 22. They're down three scores. Dillard sidearms one intended for Ed West, his tight end. Not a fun night to be a quarterback, is it, Joe? Not if you're a Green Bay Packer. I mean, if you're a Minnesota Viking, is isn't bad. Look at the pressure they put on him. Seven knockdowns. That means that after he gets through the ball, he gets hit. The hurries means that they're close, breathing down his neck. Four sacks, two fumbles, two interceptions. And right there, we just saw what happens when a quarterback gets out of his rhythm. He's got to get back. One, two, three, four, five, set, throw the football. Try and get himself back into a rhythm. Faces second and ten now. There are the numbers on Dilwig. The interceptions are the biggest. He has missed on his last seven passes. Nice bootleg action. Now under pressure. Goldman's got it. Goldman with a sack at the 15. The fifth sack of the night.
And when these guys have you where they want you, which is where they have Green Bay right now, they just come like crazy. They really do. Now, we talked to Mandrich about how, t how uh, Chris Dolman comes. He says, look at the power. Just absolutely shoves him down inside with the play action fake. Anthony Dillwig trying to do something with the football. Get it to somebody, anybody. That Dolman is a rip swim and power guy. There you saw a rip swim pushing power. And Dolman got a hold of Dillwig's face mask. They didn't see it. Forced out of the pocket again. Launches it downfield, complete across the 34, almost the 35 yard line, a gain of 20 to Sterling Sharp. Boy, Sharp just loves to play. Big smile on his face. He's out there with broken ribs, had torn cartilage on the other side of his rib cage. You know, you bring up a real interesting thing. He, you said he loves to play. Here's a guy who loves to practice. The only way you become great in this game is not on Sunday nights or Sunday afternoons or Mondays. You become great as a practice player. That's what the guy is. That's what he said he's missing. He's missing having the fun during practice when he's hurt. The huge play there. The game of 20 gives him the first down at the 35. Dillwig, short drop, goes to West. West clobbered just as soon as he got the ball by Carl Lee. Lee's been to two straight Pro Bowls as a starter. There's more Pro Bowlers on this team than you can take three or four other teams. You can't get as many guys. Yeah, and, and, and from every position. Yeah. You know, the defense, the defensive line, the defensive secondary. You got Browner and Lee. You got Dolman and Millard. Offensive line. That's right. Zimmerman. McDaniel. Wade Wilson. Walker. Jordan's been there. I mean, they're just loaded with individual talent. Second and nine, and Dillwig has to use a timeout. And you get the feeling the Packers are going to need those timeouts if they hope to get back in this game. 13.03 left. Look into the sleek design of the Sterling 827 SLI, luxuriously appointed with handcrafted wood, rich in supple Connolly leather. And right now, a Sterling 827 SLI is a most prudent investment. British performance and athletic handling with the finest, most affordable financing starting at 0%. Or lease a Sterling SLI with maintenance included at no charge. No matter how you look at it, it's time to see what it's like to drive a Sterling SLI. Okay, okay. But just suppose another tornado rips up our Meadville plant. Then what? Or suppose... We have a string of accidents, like we did in 86. Suppose... Suppose I get sick again. Would another insurance company come through like the people from the Hartford? I doubt it. And after 14 years, this fella is not about to find out. ITT Hartford. When you need us most, we're at our best. Panasonic presents a new breed of smooth operator. The new smooth operator rechargeable razor unites the old-fashioned closeness of a warm, wet shave with the convenience and no-nick comfort of an electric. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. Smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you'd be. ESPN Sunday Night NFL is brought to you by Sterling. See your Sterling dealer about 0% APR financing or leasing with no charge maintenance included. And by ITT Hartford. When you need us most, we're at our best. 13.03 to go in the game, 23-7 Minnesota. Who does that look like to you? I didn't know Mike Ditka. Mike Ditka. I mean, you know, he won in overtime, so he thought he'd come up and see if the Packers lose. You know, the Bears clinch, so he wanted to be your first in. I think we could have gotten a better seat, don't you? Unbelievable how much you look like. Second and nine from the 36. Dillwig floats one. Carl Lee and the flag goes down. Lee with coverage on Kemp. Penalty of 30 yards.
He must have run into him because the rule on face guarding, you have to wave your arms in order for that to be called. Pass interference, 39 defense, first down. You also have to try and at least make a play on the ball uh, if you're going to defend it. Here, he just flat runs into him. That, that's not, it's, that's good old fashioned pass interference. That's not face guard or anything else. He got there before the ball did. Hit him early. So the Packers have the ball at the 37 of the Vikings. Woodside goes out as a wide receiver. Dillwick throws one end over end and Joey Browner picks it off. The fifth turnover, the third interception of the night. That one was hit at the line of scrimmage. Al Noga comes around and puts that right hand out there, just manages to get a piece of the ball, which causes it to go off target so that Joey Browner can make the play. Look at that. Sure Last did. time it's the left hand. Look at that thing. Tony Mandrich admitted himself that the biggest part of his game he has to work on is pass blocking. And he said, you know, when I was at Michigan State, well, all we did was run the football. Exactly. Said the Gator Bowl you and I did a couple years ago was the most they ever threw the ball. Sixth interception for Joey Browner. That ties a career high. He has five in the last five games. Anderson dances through the hole, gets up to the 29-yard line. Johnny Holland makes the tackle. Mandarich, another one of those guys, because of his draft position, had so much pressure put on him, and last year was a little embarrassing to him. It was a waste because he came in so late, never did learn the system. But uh, don't sell this guy short. He will be a great tackle in the NFL. He's one of those kids that's just got, you know, he knows what he's got to work on. It's, uh, he's out there and on. They moved him over to the right tackle position, take a little pressure off him, and it's uh, still got work to do. Gannon rips this one to Jordan, and Jordan diving forward to the 38-yard line. Noble racked him up. Lindy Infante told us yesterday, we can't turn the ball over, and we can't afford to get behind this team. The first 11 games, or the first six games, look what they did. They lost the ball 11 times more than they turned it over. The last five games, they've done a great job, but tonight, three interceptions and two fumbles. You're not going to beat the Vikings. You're not going to beat anybody in this league if you turn it over that much. Unless they return the favor, and Minnesota has not done that. Walker protecting the ball, burrowing forward to the 44-yard line. Minnesota would like to work the clock a little bit right now. We're under 11 minutes, and there is Joey Browner. Lost his mom about a month ago. Very traumatic for him. This practiced all week, and some of, he has not said anything about it. But some of his teammates have said his level of play has really picked up since then, like he dedicated the season he to did. her. He did. He's dedicated the, uh, the rest of the season to his mom. First, she didn't want him to play, and then she became a big fan. He talked to her often. I know he missed her, and, of course, our sympathies go out to him. But, boy, his level of play is just... The Second and five. Walker on the toss behind Anderson. About a half yard shy of a first down at his own 48. Now the Packers are going to be reduced to trying to strip the football and make something happen on defense. And defense is the only place they have scored tonight on a blocked punt. This is where, as a quarterback, what you start to do is you, now you keep an eye on the 30-second clock. You get in the huddle. You know your rhythm. You just want to stretch that clock as far as you possibly can. And you remind the guy, hang on to the ball. You got to remember, Philadelphia was down 24 points to Buffalo uh, after the first quarter. So a lot can happen in a short period of time. Third and less than a yard. Anderson. First down and more as he gets to the Green Bay 49-yard line. Holmes and Lee in on the tackle. Anderson, 11 carries, 55 yards tonight. Here's the wild card look in the NFC. The Eagles 
with a good in-conference record, which is a, a very important tiebreaker. The Redskins got back in it today, beating Miami to go 7-5. and five. The Packers 6-5 and five right now. It looks like they will drop to 6-6 six and six and even in the conference, and Minnesota will rise to 6-6. Six and six. And Dallas now at 6-7, and seven, one game away from tying for that third wild card spot. Walker ran over one tackler, ran over another, gets to the 40. Lee came up and got a handful of air and a shoulder pad in the face for his trouble. I got to believe this is what you're, this is why Mike Lynn made the deal. All right, maybe right now the Vikes weren't as dominant a ball club as they were last year, but see how he runs, see how he puts his head down with contact, then he lifts his head up again. Earlier in the year, he wasn't doing that. He was running with his head down a lot and not having a chance to see the tacklers. Now he keeps his head up more. Of course, when you get in holes like that, you can keep your head up a little bit. And if you can put him in the eye, he is still a wicked one. Anderson, the up back, gets the carry. Should have the first down inside the 38-yard line. Noble and Murphy have been very active tonight, make the tackle again. Uh, if you're, you know, if you're Green Bay right now, you, you've got to almost go to what we call basically a gap aid. You've got to put some people, get your safeties up on the line of scrimmage, bring the linebackers, stuff the run. You can't allow Herschel and Alfred to just keep taking the ball and cramming it down your throat. You've got to gamble at this point. I don't think there is a doubt in anybody's mind that the Minnesota Vikings were not a one and six football team. They are now six and six. And will be winners of the sixth straight if they hang on tonight. Walker again. Out of the eye, down to the 32. There's a flag down. He just is able to find the creases so much more effectively starting seven yards behind the center. Holding, 69 offense, still first down. The one trouble with the I formation, it is not the easiest way to run a passing game. Yeah, but it, actually that's not true. Uh, that's not true. The only guy you're really taking out of the passing attack, and that's to get him out, in the back, out of backfield quickly, is the guy you're faking to. Fullback's going to be in about the same spot. Tight end and both receivers are. So I actually think it's a very good formation for them. Walker from the eye, 39 yards from the split back set, minus yardage. Gannon forced out of the pocket. And this one is on its way to St. Paul. And there is a flag down, downfield. It will not be a grounding call. The illegal receiver downfield. That was Kirk Loudermilk, the center. I guess you'd qualify him as an illegal receiver. Yep, he didn't report. Obviously, he didn't report. That would be the second illegal receiver downfield call we've had tonight. When I first started with the Redskins, offensive tackle I played with, Terry Hermeling, used to give me more heck in the huddle and he'd say, Joe, if you're going to go down the field, tell me. An eligible receiver downfield, number 69. Still first down. You know, you can't fault the guys for trying to block for you, so you, you try and temper it, and the longer you play together, the more you learn one another. Well, they call it on Kalis. He and Loudermilk were both downfield. We haven't been able to figure out what this is yet, and we'll probably, probably be off the air before we do. It is a purple people feeder, we're told. I still can't figure it out. Anderson, Harris got him from behind. He gets to the 45-yard line. Clock ticking away. This I would, drive is eating up an awful lot of time. We're down to 622. I mean, the Vikings uh, have been on, their offense has been on the field the entire second yeah. half down here. I think this is a great opportunity in the football game to run some kind of play action and try and get some more points on the board. I mean, you basically ignored uh, Jordan all day, and now you split Walker out wide and uh, and try and do something with him. Cedric Smith, number 30, is in his fullback. 
He'll get the call. Gets a couple. Smith block for Emmett Smith of Florida. And now we're told it is a Vicodontus Rex. Oh, I knew that. Thank you. So well, why do you say so? Like, I, I, I wasn't sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I was going to call and check a history or one of those prehistoric uh -huh. books. Didn't really get to the V's in time. Vicodonix Rex. Third and 26. The Vikings have to get to the Packer 37-yard line. Make it to 27 for the first down. Wright tries to cut it back into Packer territory at the 48-yard line. It doesn't matter that this drive did not produce any points. It took about five minutes off the clock. It accomplished what it wanted to. And now, you know something now? Everybody thinks, oh, well, the game is over. And people say, geez, you know, why do you leave your people in? Right now, it's very important for the Packers to get some kind of a, a continuity back in their offense. It's important for Dillwig to settle down and make some small completions, do what he has to do to get some rhythm going. Mikowski may not be ready again next week. We talked to him this morning on game day. So, I mean, you still have to keep that guy that's playing for you ready. I think it's also important for his offensive line to keep him alive until the game's over. Big rush. Newsom got it out of there. Query signals fair catch and steps up to the 13 to make the grab. 39-yard punt, no return. 4.15 to go in the ball game. Vikings 23, Packers 7. This game is brought to you in your local cable system by your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Stop by and check out the Chrysler Advantage. Now, just underway, it's one incredible advantage clearance at your Chrysler Plymouth dealers. Huge inventories of Plymouth Voyagers have forced us to take action. So for a limited time only, you can get spectacular deals on the front-wheel drive minivan that drives like a car. Pick one out and get on-the-spot financing. Then drive home a roomy seven-passenger van. You can afford to pass this up. Go see your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers now, where you have all the advantages, except time. See your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealer. It sets free the artist in you. Fishers of Florissant Proline Sports is your one-stop sporting goods store for Christmas. And from head to toe, Fishers has you covered with a large selection of name brand athletic shoes, sportswear, and a full line of accessories. At our newly remodeled store, our experienced and knowledgeable sales staff will help you with your selection of the perfect Christmas gift. For service and quality, for competitive prices, with outstanding selection, your one-stop store for Christmas is Fisher's Proline Sports, located three-quarters of a mile north of 270 in Florissant. Lindy and Bonnie and Jerry Burns both knew how important this game was to their clubs, but it was more important to Burnsy Joe because his team was one game under 500. He had to get back to 6-6 six and six to have a chance. Not only that, I think you've got to take into consideration the road they have ahead of them. They got the Giants at New York, Tampa Bay, who won today, maybe saving Ray Perkins' job, which has been a big question mark. Then the Raiders at home, and then San Francisco comes in on December 30th. That is not an enviable schedule when you're trying to play for any kind of a playoff spot. They have to look back uh, when they were losing three-point losses to Kansas City, Chicago, and Tampa Bay. I mean, three points to each of those teams. One game anyway can make a big difference. Packers take over inside their 15. Dillwig sidearms this one to Weathers. He's pushed out of bounds to the 23-yard line. Audrey McMillan, who has two interceptions tonight, pushes him out. There's the magic man. Anthony Dillwig was very candid about his position, and Lindy and Fonny has made no bones about it. That's the number one quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. But Dillwig sort of puts it, I think, in a different light. He says, they're paying him $1.45 million. They're paying me $160,000. Who do you think's number one? one5 every time but this guy here you know he's playing right now to prove that he's not just a backup quarterback that he can be a starter and i think he can he's played very well tonight has been an exception 
Four-man rush. Joey still looking from behind, and they got him. John Randall, number 93, gets in on the sack along with Dolman. And it's not a sack because he got back to the line of scrimmage. Nonetheless, a fine play by Randall. Chris Dolman continues to be a dominant defensive end or linebacker, whatever you want to call him. Look at that. Up the field. Now look at the pursuit. He's running with the linebacker, and they catch up to Dillard. Third, the yard flags are down. They'll stop the play. It was a first Ball down. Start, Excuse me. 77 offense. Still first down. Mandrich moved early. So now it'll be first and 15 as they back it up to the 20. Chris Dolman's just going to run down Anthony Dillwig. Anthony can't see him, but he sure hurt him. Remember when Dolman started as a linebacker? They, that's the way they drafted him. And they thought this was going to be a real success. He was a bust at a linebacker. They made him a down lineman. He's been an all-pro ever since. I played against him the first year he was a linebacker, and that was fine. Dillwig gets it out to Weathers, avoids having Rutland see Hornham and goes down. Rutland wanted a souvenir helmet, it looked like. They wanted to take that Green Bay helmet and hang it on a rack, except the only thing was, was he was waiting for the guy's head to be in. Call it second and 12. 3.16 to go. Dillwig over the middle of Weathers again, brought down by Fullington this time at the 34. Now they'll mark it across the 35 and close to a first down. Delwick just took another shot in the gut from Henry Thomas. I mean, if nothing else, this guy here is going to get a purple heart. Coming into this game, and he had a rating of 92.7, and here is movement and flags go down. That 92.7 rating, if he had enough attempts, would be behind only Montana and Sims in the conference. So tonight you are seeing a different Anthony Delwick than uh, the Packers have seen while he's been playing for Mikowski. Ball start, 77 offense, still first round. When you're tired, when you've been beat on all day, middle of your screen, he gets spoofed right here, look at that. Noga starts up, he takes a little bit of a step because he knows he's been beat hard on the outside. He wants to get back and protect the quarterback. Al says, it was you, 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 you move. Mandris lost some weight this season trying to uh, improve his quickness. He also lost some of his strength in the process. Dillwig flips it out of there, completes the camp across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Michael Brim was in on the tackle, but the clock running, 236. That's Tommy Kramer in the leather jacket. Kramer is physically ready to go. But Gannon will have won his fifth straight at quarterback, and until that string comes to an end, Gannon will be the Vikings quarterback. Wilson. Wade Wilson. Wade Wilson, excuse right. me. Kramer wishes he was. He is yeah. physically, actually, you're right. Tommy is ready to go, uh, except that nobody's hired him. But uh, Wade, you know, this is the thing. Wade Wilson is healthy, uh, has a little bit of weakness in the thumb that he tore up in the third week of the season. But um, as long as Gannon continues to win, it's his job. Michael Brim is the injured player for the Vikings. We'll check on him when we come back. It's 23-7. Hello, Mom. It's Jimmy. You sound as if you're in the next room, dear. With Optic Phone's new fiber optic audio sonic lasers. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. You've heard it said before. It's not just what you say. It's how you say it. Laser jet printers from Hewlett Packard. They'll get you noticed. At BASM, we don't make the house, we make it warmer. We don't make the suit, we make it racier. We don't make the meal, we make it healthier. We don't make the music, we make it clearer. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF, the spirit of innovation. Hi, I'm Mr. Dip. 
The Snap Chip! I stay crunchy and dab! Uh-oh. Still going. Nothing outlasts the Energizer. They keep going and going. Sunday night, the Philadelphia Eagles. Randall Cunningham intends to squish the fish. The Miami Dolphins. Dan Marino digs in for this battle between two rifle arms. Live on ESPN Sunday Night NFL. Down to two and a half minutes to go. Second and five for the Packers. They need three scores and have precious little time to get them. Dillwig to Fontenot. Got out of bounds. Audre McMillan tossed him out very near the first down marker. Minnesota has totally dominated the second half in regard to time of possession. They've had it 21 minutes to six and a half for Green Bay. Green Bay only generating six, I believe, offensive plays in that third quarter alone. And no points. Their points came on a blocked punt. Offense didn't get on the field in that quarter until a little right around two minutes. Exactly. Three-man rush this time, and Dillard has to dump it off to Fontenot again. Tackle made that time by the rookie out of Pitt, Alonzo Hampton. Approaching the two-minute warning, trying to get off a play before we get there. And they can't do it. Two minutes to go for Minnesota, and it's all Vikings. 23-7 over the Packers. Did you know that more moms and pops, mothers and daughters, fathers and sons, all kinds of businesses look to AT&T for accurate billing, immediate credit for missed out calls, an operator when you need one. This is Clancy and Sons. Your piano's on its way. All at extremely competitive prices. In fact, businesses use AT&T more often than all other long-distance companies combined. Quality service, competitive price. Another AT&T advantage. ideas were so original, there's no going back. That same innovative thinking helped us invent Scotch brand tapes, and people have been sticking with us ever since. 3M, innovation working for you. The thirst for adventure is Michelob Dry. Refreshing beyond the ordinary. And once you've experienced the bold taste with no aftertaste, there is no going back. After the pack of the Vikings, it's the 60-minute sports center. We'll have everything on week 13, including the play by Randall Cunningham. We'll have a chance to look at it again. Our conversation is with Bill Parcells to look at the Niners and Giants rivalry. I'm Bob Lee, Dan Patrick, and I right after the game. Mike and Joe? Thank you, Bob. We'll be standing by for all of that, and we want to take this chance to wish uh, Jimmy Moore, our technical director, a speedy recovery, home watching the game, we hope, tonight, and feeling better. Two minutes left, second and six. Green Bay down 23-7. Dillwig throws and throws incomplete at the 42-yard line. Take a look at the wild card scenario, the way it shapes up after this game. Philadelphia and Washington tied at 7-5. and five. Then Green Bay and Minnesota now tied at 6-6 six and six for the third spot. Dallas only one game back in the loss column at 6-7. and seven. Right now, Green Bay with a slight edge over Minnesota in the tiebreaker. And what a great job Jimmy Johnson's done in Dallas. I mean, they're, you're looking at, I think, potentially what should be the coach of the year. And with the deals he made for Walsh and Walker, getting all those draft choices, executive of the last two. And Dallas gets the bye next week, the perfect time to heal them to get ready for the stretch run and maybe make the playoffs. Fontenot in the flat. Tried to get away and couldn't stop the 49 by Carl Lee. And Fontenot hurt himself. Looked like he was clutching at a hand 
and just crawled off the field. And now being attended to on the sideline. And Green Bay takes a timeout there second. Tries to plant and come back. Looks like he gets that hand down. And hard to tell exactly. He's in a lot of pain right now. Uses that left arm to support himself. Lee comes up to make the tackle. Ended up a lot of weight on his wrist and his elbow. With being attended to on the sideline. Fontenot out of Louisiana State playing in his sixth season and has become a third down pass specialist for this club. Played at Cleveland for four years before coming over here. Fourth and seven. Green Bay, of course, will go for it from its own 49. Dillwig under pressure, throws, and it's incomplete. Kemp couldn't hold it. So they turn it over on down, and a big smile on the face of Mike Merriweather, who has been exceptional since they put him back at the weak side linebacker. That was the spot where he made the Pro Bowl three straight years for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He's just the ideal size to do it. 6'2", 222 pounds, 232 pounds, a lot of speed, great athlete, of course, with the, with the uh, Steelers, went to three Pro Bowls, took the year off, got his contract squared away, and just playing Pro Bowl kind of football. 1.34 left in the game. The Packers only with one timeout, so the Vikings able to salt this one away and raise their record to 6-6 six and six with their fifth win in a row. And D.J. Dozier gets to see his first action of the night. He's number 42, and Dozier will get the carry. Dozier appears to have a bright future in baseball. We'll talk about that in a second. Of course, coming up next Sunday night, we'll be in Miami to see the Dolphins and the Eagles. That's 8 o'clock Eastern. Philadelphia, of course, in the playoff hunt, and the Dolphins still trying to win their division. Cunningham and Marino. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern. Looking forward to that. There's Dozier. He has spent uh, the last couple of years in the Mets farm system with a nice average, 324, obviously with speed, seven triples. Got up to double-A this year. I talked to him uh, this week. He said he hopes to go back, maybe triple-A. They say they may even bring him up in spring training to the big, to the bigs. And I asked him, I said, well, what's, the, what's the one thing that you need to work on? He said he needs to work on his arm. It's not as strong. He plays in the outfield, center field, and I believe right field, and he just, uh, and he says he'd like to do both. Well, there's a spot open in right field. Yeah. The yeah. Of course, he, he did not re-sign with this club until the 7th of November. He did not want to be a backup to Herschel Walker. Coming up right after our telecast, Sports Center, Bob Lee and Dan Patrick will bring you all the news, and then the NFL prime time will wrap up everything that's gone on in the National Football League today. And there has been a lot of action, some great plays. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and intended for the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast or other use without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Working down toward a minute, clock showing third and 11 for the Vikings. And Lindy and Fonny got himself in a situation tonight he knew he could not afford to, making turnovers and getting behind. Flags go down, and we'll stop the clock with 49 seconds to go. That gives us a chance to take a look at the road ahead for the Packers. Uh, we saw what the Vikings are faced with. Seattle goes into Milwaukee, and then uh, the Pack goes to Philadelphia. The run and shoot comes to uh, Green Bay, and then they go to Denver. By that time of year, weather's not an element. Uh, I imagine weather in Green Bay would be somewhat similar to that in Denver. So, uh, I mean, if you were to look at the schedules, Right off the top of your head, you think, well, Green Bay has, I think, a slight advantage in the teams that they're playing. Of course, a lot of their future will depend on that guy, Don Mikowski. I don't believe out of the University of Virginia. I don't believe he's going to be ready next week. I believe that it's going to take two more, uh, another week after that for him to be ready. The injury has really been very slow in healing, and it's uh, the muscle in his back after he throws the ball. It's the one that helps you with your follow-through. 
That's what is very painful. And Joey Browner celebrating. Picked off his fifth interception in five games tonight. And it was the Minnesota defense that did the job. Five turnovers. Did not give up a point and made life very miserable for Anthony Dillwood. The Vikings are going to have to take one more snap because the game clock's at 19 and the uh, they're 16 and the play clock is uh, a little bit before that. One second, I believe, is going to be left. Packers jumping offside. I don't know what's accomplished at this. I don't either. I mean, with a minute and 23 seconds to go, they used their last time out. And they're down by 16. Um, to Lindy and Fonte's credit, he is not trying to stop the clock. Not trying to call. No, his out. guys are just it's a little no, senseless. His guys are, are antsy up front, and uh, they're trying to get to again, and it's not going to happen. The game is over. And I think the officials want to make sure that nothing happens between these players with somebody trying to dive over and get the quarterback with four seconds left. They just said, let's get out of here. That's right. Good choice, too. Your impression? Well, I, I think the Packers get, get, got out of their game. Lindy told us earlier, he said, we can't get very far behind this football team. They hung close, close through the first half. The second half, some big plays by the Viking defense. And really, that is the part of your team that's going to carry you into championships. The defense has to play well. I still believe that they're protecting Rich Gannon by running Herschel Walker. The Vikings have to do that. Whether it's going to be Gannon next week, whether it's going to be Wilson, only Jerry Burns knows for sure. Our final score from the Metrodome, the Vikings 23, the Packers 7. For Joe Theismann and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick saying good night from Minneapolis. Sports Center is next following this commercial.